News Prime Time starts now. It is 8 o'clock on a Friday night. The Atlanta mayoral race heating up. One newcomer coming out swinging where Walter Reeves stands on the issues. And this is not Walter Reeves that you know from the radio and the newspaper over the years as a gardener. Right now, police are making progress in their investigation into the Piedmont Park killing. They've identified another possible witness ahead of a busy weekend at the park. But we begin tonight with the battle against COVID and doctors in Northwest Georgia yeah. are growing more and more concerned that the surging infections they dealt with back in the winter are beginning to repeat itself. The number of cases and hospitalizations quickly rising, but for now, the hospitals in that region have not yet hit the point of being overstressed. They are close though. The doctors that Joe Hankey talked with say that this spike was avoidable with the unvaccinated making up the majority of people who have become ill. August 2020, Dr. Jennifer Barbary with Harbin Clinic in Floyd County first talked with 11 Alive. I hope that this doesn't continue for too much longer because uh, it is, I don't think it is sustainable. I think there's going to be a high degree of burnout. Since then, vaccines have become readily available to the point supply is higher than demand. But once again, in Northwest Georgia, cases, hospitalizations, and COVID-19 positive test rates are all on the rise again. I think we're more scared this time. Uh, the virulence of the Delta variant has us a little bit concerned and just our low percentage of vaccinations throughout the state are definitely probably one of our greatest concerns. Currently in Georgia's hospital region C covering Floyd County and much of the northern state line with Alabama, 17% of people hospitalized have COVID-19. If the trend continues, hospitals in northwest Georgia could face a situation like they did in January when elective surgeries needed to be canceled and patients were diverted to other hospitals. What I think we're observing now is the rise is much more rapid. You know, we are seeing a much higher number of cases every day. Our hospitals are filling up so fast and, you know, we are, I fear what the next few weeks may hold. Numbers are increasing. It's very worrisome. Dr. Gary Voscio is the Georgia Department of Public Health Director for Northwest Georgia. He's keeping an eye on positive test rates for COVID-19. Anything above 20%, which Northwest Georgia is inching toward, is considered dangerous. It's very significantly high numbers compared to what we experienced a few weeks ago. Uh, all of our counties are in the in the positive teen range, 15, 16, 20% almost. Voscio says it's too early to tell if hospitals will need to return to COVID emergency plans, but doctors are concerned. We reported uh, almost 6,000 cases in Georgia yesterday, and over the past four weeks, we have doubled those numbers every week for the past four weeks. So at an accelerated rate, we are seeing these positive COVID cases. And as cases and hospitalizations continue to significantly increase in Northwest Georgia, Dr. Barbary and Dr. Voscio tell me, of course, the best defense right now is getting vaccinated if you are not already. And as we focus on the rise in coronavirus cases throughout the state, we want to make sure we're giving you the facts, not fear. We hear your concerns and tonight we're answering some of your questions. Where do I need to wear a mask indoors? According to the CDC, it's best to wear a mask in public when you're in an area of high transmission. Right now, that includes all of Metro Atlanta. If you've had your shots and around other fully vaccinated people, the risk is low. If you don't know the status of others or you're in crowded places, masking up is a great protection. How do I know if I have the Delta variant? The short answer is you won't. The CDC takes a random sample of tests each week to figure out the spread of different virus strains. The Georgia Department of Public Health tells us the Delta variant currently makes up about 78% of all new cases here. So what's the difference between a third dose or booster shot? And do I need one? A booster shot would just be a third dose of the vaccine. Both Pfizer and Moderna suggest another round of shots may be necessary to provide added protection. But that's not likely to happen for at least a few more months while the CDC and FDA run tests and review research. Right now, the focus is getting more unvaccinated people that initial round of protection in areas where the virus is quickly spreading. As schools begin to reopen in metro Atlanta and across the nation. Many states, including Georgia, are leaving it up to local schools to decide whether to wear a mask or not. Now, this map will put it all into perspective. New Jersey, Illinois, California, Louisiana, Oregon, and Washington intend to require masks for all students and teachers, regardless of vaccine status. 
At the other end of the spectrum, you have states like Florida, South Carolina, Texas, and a few others that have banned mask requirements in all the public schools. Today, Governor Kemp doubled down on his opposition to a statewide mask mandate for schools while visiting students and staff at a school in Cherokee County. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein-Peter had the opportunity to ask him about it. During his visit at this elementary school in Cherokee County today, Governor Kemp said that he continues to have the same concerns about mandates and is planning on leaving that decision up to local educators and keeping it out of the hands of government. Every school's different. There are different neighborhoods, they're in different counties. You know, they're rural, they're suburban, they're urban. And, you know, I for one have been, for the most part, when I could be a local control governor when it comes to education. The governor adding he trusts the school system because he believes they've adequately handled coronavirus issues over the last 15 months. We're doing the same thing we did last year. We're trusting the local school systems, the local boards to work with their parents, work with their administration and make good decisions for each individual school. According to the Associated Press, about 30% of public schools in Georgia have some kind of mask mandate. Masks are optional in the rest. Some parents have told 11 Alive it's led kids who opt to wear a mask to be bullied. We asked Governor Kemp about it. Well, look, if, if I was that parent, I'd be talking to the principal at the school and the teachers and making sure that that's not happening. I mean, I'm very confident the local systems can deal with that. The governor and the first lady said they chose to visit Ball Ground Elementary today to express their gratitude to teachers and staff for their resilience and dedication over the last year. The visit comes at a time when thousands of students across the state are heading back to the classroom. And as the governor faces pressure from fellow Republicans, to ban mask mandates in schools. Our team is tracking the latest developments on COVID-19 in schools, as well as watching the case numbers across the state. To take a look at the interactive map and see the numbers for yourself, head on over to 11alive.com. Right now, DeKalb County police need your help finding a missing five-year-old boy. Police tell us Lavelle Barnett's grandmother reported him missing on Monday. But she told police she has not seen her grandson since April. When investigators spoke with the child's mother, she told them she left him with an acquaintance in Panthersville back in April, shortly before being incarcerated. The acquaintance later told the boy's mom that he was placed in the care of the state's Division of Family and Children's Services. Now, DFAX has since confirmed to police that no child matching the five-year-old's description is in their care. Police say his mother is not considered a suspect. Anyone with information on Lavelle's whereabouts is asked to call Atlanta Crime Stoppers. Developing tonight, Atlanta City Council considering adding police patrols and updating the camera network at Piedmont Park. This comes as the search continues for the person who killed Katie Jonas and her dog Bowie as they walked in the park last week. Joe Ripley spent the day at Piedmont Park getting the story. Yeah, 10 days later and Katie Jonas's death still rings fresh here. You, every so often you will see people stop by this memorial uh, and just stare in sadness and disbelief over what happened here. Her death also sparking action right now from Atlanta City Council. You can't miss the memorial sitting at the entrance to Piedmont Park. It was here more than a week ago that 40 year old Katie Jonas and her dog Bowie were killed. Jonas was last seen walking her dog across the Rainbow Crosswalk close to the park. While there's still no arrest, police say they are making progress. Just hours after releasing this photo of another possible witness today, police say the jogger has come forward to speak to detectives. Cameras have been a point of contention in this case. Those demanding answers say there should be more cameras in the park. The cameras that have been labeled as, as having kind of outlived their usefulness I think are a natural place for us to look as it, relate, as it relates to replacing them. Um, and this is one piece of a citywide conversation about making sure that we have coverage um, that, that will help keep residents and businesses safe. Atlanta City Councilman Matt Westmoreland says Jonas's killing has rocked the city, causing city council to consider adding extra police patrols and updated cameras in and around the park. Joe Ripley reporting for us tonight. Getting around Atlanta is getting a little bit pricey. 47 bucks. Uh, new fare just went up to $55 while we were speaking. Uh, that's nice. Demand is at an all-time high for ride shares like Uber and Lyft, and there are not enough drivers to go around. That means it's going to be longer waits and higher rates. And they are making more money than the driver. Can you believe that? It is just putting a, a finger of honey in the mouth of a driver. 
All right. Tonight, after the Olympics on 11 Alive, we will investigate what it means for the price that you pay for rideshare services. Yeah, really expensive when you're trying to leave the airport. Going rate these days, 80 bucks. Is it really that high? Yeah, it's, it's been going on that, uh, going on like that for a few weeks now. Hmm. All right, this next story here is about informing our nation's youngest voters. Up next, how one class is preparing teenagers to vote in next year's big elections. Plus, seeing art in a new way, we're taking you inside the Digital Art Museum as we continue to explore Japan. traffic be it good or bad he just feels like your uncle joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh you feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports weather can't run from the all-new 11 alive thunder truck a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions the 11 alive thunder truck sponsored by landmark dive they come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the, the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcon. New details tonight from Atlanta police. They say Officer Ty is recovering well after being shot during that ambush in June. Police say he is in good spirits. Officer Ty's entire unit traveled to his home to check on him and show support. He was shot as he was getting off an elevator at a midtown apartment complex off Peachtree Street. The suspect who ambushed Ty and his partner was shot and killed by police. A major development in the murder of an Oconee County gas station clerk. Investigators now releasing a sketch of a man they believe shot and killed 23-year-old Elijah Wood. The racetrack clerk was shot and killed while working at the Watkinsville store back in March. A $50,000 reward is being offered in the case. Anyone with information is asked to give the Oconee County Sheriff's Office a call. And we just learned a man has been arrested in connection with a deadly overnight shooting. Clayton County police responding to a home on Peacock Boulevard in Morrow and found a man shot to death in the front yard. They're still investigating what led up to the shooting, but say a small gathering was taking place at the time. The suspect is facing charges of malice murder and tampering with evidence. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg touring transportation sites in the metro for the second time in less than three months. His first stop, the first ever solar roadway in Peachtree Corners, and then the new Buford Highway Corridor in Doraville. Speaking at a press conference, Buttigieg says the massive infrastructure package moving through Congress right now will help transform transportation in our country. And tomorrow, the U.S. Senate could vote on passing that $1.2 trillion bill. Millions of teenagers Teenagers will be eligible to vote in next year's elections and a special group of them are using the time before they can go to the polls to educate themselves about democracy in America. Caitlin Ross reports on this one of a kind program. The students enrolled in the Atlanta Public School Democracy class are passionate about the right to vote, and they want adults to take them seriously. Encourage us, because your grandchildren, your children are the ones that will be uh, inhabiting this earth once you're gone, so you want them to have a good place to stay. Annie Ware won't be old enough to vote until the presidential election in 2024. 
but that's not stopping her from helping others learn how. If I was old enough to vote, I would, but you know, I can't, so I feel like it's my job to make sure that others vote. She joined democracy class at APS with Rock the Vote, the New Georgia Project, and AMB Sports and Entertainment to learn more about the history of voting rights in America. She says learning about how long women and minorities were denied the right to vote has been emotional. Anger can be a good emotion. It, it can be used as, in a positive way. So giving them that, showing them that anger and giving them that anger will um, empower them. This is an incredibly passionate generation. Uh, the reality is they just need the information and resources to uh, participate in the process. Carolyn DeWitt is the executive director of Rock the Vote, and she says she was excited to launch this new program in Atlanta. We know that young people are the biggest influencers on other young people, and so a big part of this is also creating those champions and trusted messengers. She says she hopes the teens in this class will carry that message to their friends in the years to come. If I started now and I learned about the process now, it will be a lot easier for me once I turn 18 and actually able to vote. Temperatures today still held below the average. We topped off at 86 degrees. The average high for this time of year is 90, so we were about 4 degrees below average. And this morning it was 71, you know, kind of mild out there, but 1 degree below the average. We should be around 72 for this time of year. Again, the humidity levels weren't that bad, so it wasn't really feeling too muggy. We haven't seen many showers around either. In fact, we picked up zero rain at Hartsfield Jackson. Most of us picked up zero rain. There have only been just a couple little spotty showers around, mainly in northwest Georgia. And we have a surplus right now of about two and a half inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. Now, as we go through the next 12 hours, we're going to see these temperatures falling from the 80s into the 70s for the rest of the evening hours and then really pretty much hold in the low 70s overnight and into tomorrow morning. We will see uh, once the sun comes up some clouds mixing in with that, and that's going to be the trend really for a big part of the day tomorrow. And I'm really thinking we'll see more clouds than sun. There will be some sun at times, but then especially in the afternoon hours. We'll see more of those clouds around also in the afternoon. That's when we're going to see that chance for some scattered showers to develop. The rain chance is going to go up to about a 40% chance. Again, not raining all day. We're just talking about the afternoon variety and it'll be hit and miss. So on our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day, we're going to go with a 6 on the wasometer. Temperatures up to about 88 degrees. I think we'll get another day in not making it to 90. Once we get into Sunday, that's when we think we'll make it into those uh, lower 90s again. So here's what we're watching this evening. Again, most of us are dry. There are just a few little spotty showers possible uh, in North Georgia. In the morning, it starts off dry. We have more sunshine, but a few clouds around blocking out that sun at times. And then at lunchtime, I think we'll see more clouds around blocking out more of that sun, but still no rain in Atlanta. We'll be watching a couple of showers, though, trying to move into West Georgia around lunchtime. I really think our best chance for those scattered showers will be later on in the afternoon. This is at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. You can see how it's not really an organized line of showers and storms or anything. It's just going to be a few of those that will be popping up here and there. We don't expect anything to be severe. There may be some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning, but not like a widespread severe weather event. And then Sunday morning, dry start, a lot of sunshine. Same thing at lunchtime and then in the afternoon on Sunday, a little bit of green showing up here. Not a lot. We're talking about a 20% chance for a shower to develop on Sunday afternoon. So check out what we're watching with your seven day outlook. I, I do think we'll stay below 90 on Saturday with that high of 88, but there's that 40% chance for showers in the afternoon hours. And then we see the rain chances coming down to 20% Sunday and Monday. But with that, temperatures do move back up into the lower 90s, right at 90 on Sunday, 91 on Monday, and then Back to a 30% chance for some of those isolated, just the pop up afternoon and evening variety is what we're talking about with high temperatures each day, Tuesday through Friday, moving up to right around 90 or 91 degrees. Tonight we continue our exploration of the Olympic host country. We take you inside one of Japan's popular tourist attractions and a new way to experience art, the Digital Art Museum. Explore Japan, sponsored by the Georgia Department of Public Health. It is the world's first digital art museum, and it's based on the theme, Borderless. 
There are no ropes to stand behind or signs to tell you not to touch anything. The exhibits move and interact with visitors. Some art projections react to your touch. It's immersive and it's designed to make you feel like you're a part of the displays. There are areas where you help create the art around you. It's been so popular since it opened about two years ago that even when the Olympics are not in the city, there are long lines. Everywhere you look, there is an Instagram worthy picture or video, which is part of the draw here. It's a unique digital art experience in our digital age. The new school year is here for many, but while some students are really, really excited, others are not. We're taking a closer look at how schools are helping the kiddies get readjusted to the classroom. We're just saying professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Live News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as the, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 New this hour, United Airlines has become the first major domestic carrier to mandate COVID-19 vaccines for all employees. Company officials say that workers who refuse to show proof of vaccination will be fired. The employees have until late October to share their status with the company. Unions represent around 85% of United's more than 85,000 workforce. The airline says it has not reached agreements with the unions on the new rule. United is not requiring passengers to get the vaccine. Mercedes-Benz Stadium is again working to help get Georgians vaccinated against COVID. Tomorrow you'll be able to get your shot while attending the Falcons open practice. Pfizer doses will be offered for all eligible fans who have a ticket to practice. You can get your shot between 1 and 3 p.m. on the Sky Bridge. Practice is set for 2 to 4 p.m. Right now, only 41% of Georgians are fully vaccinated. Happening tomorrow morning, dozens of COVID survivors will march at St. Luke's Episcopal to remember coronavirus virus victims. Local health officials will be there urging Georgians to get the COVID vaccine. The organizer of the march is Tanya Washington. She is a COVID survivor and her father died of COVID in March, even though he was vaccinated. He caught the virus from an unvaccinated worker. The march is from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. tomorrow. We will have more on that march tonight at 11. 
on the news after the Olympics. Well, some kids may be excited to finally return to the classroom. If they say they're excited, they're probably lying to you. Mm -hmm. uh, they say that is not the case at all. Yeah, I, I would assume that if they're not excited, <laughs> you can see it all over their faces, right? Poor kids. It's been a tough year. Liza Lucas gives us a closer look at how the students are faring amid this ongoing pandemic and how schools plan to support students as the school year unfolds. By the second semester, motivation was down, their grades were starting to fall. What Dr. Janine Janot works with students who are struggling or need extra support. And while she says there was a growing need for mental health support prior to COVID-19, she says the need this past year has been huge. What students were telling me was they didn't care anymore. And this was really unsettling to students because what I'd always heard in the past was, you know, I may look like I don't care, but I really care. I just can't figure out what I need to do. Dr. Janot attributes such feelings to burnout, but says kids on the whole have been really suffering in the wake of the pandemic. The latest Kids Count report gives us a little idea of how Georgia kids are doing. According to July data, nearly a third of families surveyed report kids feeling nervous, anxious, or on edge, while 24% feel down, depressed, or hopeless. And Dr. Janot is concerned some kids didn't get a real break this summer amid efforts to deal with learning loss. Well, the summer was the perfect opportunity to take a break and recover. So any kids who were pushed into or pushed themselves into doing more work this summer, um, I, I'm afraid they'll walk through the door still burned out. 11 Alive checked in with Metro Atlanta districts to get a better idea of how schools will support students this year. Atlanta Public Schools is hiring 10 additional psychologists and 25 more social workers. Gwinnett also doubling social worker staff to accommodate the need. Part of Fulton County School strategy includes a text for help tool, while Paulding County will have crisis text line cards available for all middle and high school students. Just a snapshot of some of the efforts in place. My deep my deepest hope is that when those students walk through the door that their mental health is priority. And we also want to share a few resources experts say students, parents, and teachers can take advantage of. The freeyourfeels.org website has lots of resources for back to school stress. Experts also recommend the Not OK app, which was developed by Atlanta siblings. And don't forget the Georgia Crisis and Access Line, which is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The number is 800 715 4225. You can also find more in Liza Lucas's story online. Line. There are a lot of connected people asking a lot of questions about Georgia politics. Is Herschel Walker running? Is Stacey Abrams running? But not a lot of answers right now. We discuss it all with NBC's Chuck Todd. Jeff does, to be specific. We'll be right back. Whether a viral story is true or false, 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as the, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. 
They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Chesley, I just think Breaking news right now in the search for a five year old boy reported missing in DeKalb County. Police tell us Lavelle Barnett has been in the state's care, but under a different name in a nearby county. DeKalb County police say false statement charges are pending against the boy's mom. Well, after being canceled last year and then pushed back this year, the 85th annual Dogwood Festival is finally happened. The day is here. Yeah, and the Dogwood has always been dogged, if you will, by bad weather. And the good news is mm. the weather looks like it's great. So mm -hmm. uh, there have been so many things during the pandemic that are not quite the same. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens spent the day in Piedmont Park to explain. There are a lot of changes because of COVID and security. But get this, organizers said they only had three months to plan the entire festival because the available date options kept changing. But everyone I talked to out here are just thrilled to be at an outdoor event. It feels great to be able to walk around and actually come to a festival and event outdoors. And it's been a long time. And I'm glad to be here. Um, it was I was happy just to get out and be able to in the air and see people. The 85th annual Dogwood Festival comes as a relief to many. I mean, it's just great for everybody. Executive Director Brian Hill says the festival gives artists and entertainers a creative release they have needed after a year of canceled shows and events due to COVID. I mean, the performers were so excited when we actually got a date and the artists. I mean, they've been they've been working for a year and a half and had nowhere to show their wares, nowhere to sell it. So they've got a stock of incredible art that people are going to see and they're showing it for the first time. And that includes students artwork too being sold through a silent auction. This was the year that if you ever want to support students, this is the year to do it because so many of them have had such an unusual year. You know, you're working at home, you're not getting that day-to-day -day input from your teacher and your peers as well. But there are other changes this year because of the virus. Hand sanitizer stations are added along with better spacing. We've, we've got the, the uh, hand sanitizing stations everywhere. We put an awful lot of distance this year between the vendors so that people won't get real crowded and a larger stage for musical acts. I got my uh, two injections in May, so um, I'm good. And it is outdoors, and it's warmer, and the air is circulating around, so um, I think we're okay. We're, we're stopping two hours earlier in the evening than we have in the past, and we've got a, 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 a good amount, adequate amount of police and security. Some you'll see, some you won't. I love a lot of the art. I love that, yes, so. And the food is good. So. I'm, I'm glad to see a lot of people without masks walking. I'm glad to see people with masks walking. So I think it's going to be great. I don't think I don't have really any concerns. And back out here live, one other change is the festival ends two hours earlier each night. Now there are over 200 artists and entertainers here, so there is literally something for everyone. Back to you. Tonight, the Biden administration just extending the federal student loan payment moratorium until January 31st. The announcement coming just weeks before the pause was set to expire at the end of September. In a statement, the Department of Education called this the final extension. The federal student loan payment moratorium began in March of last year when Congress passed the CARES Act. Since then, both President Biden and former President Trump signed executive orders to extend it. The new jobs report out today showing American employers added 943,000 jobs in July. Hotels and restaurants added 327,000 jobs last month, followed by local public schools adding 221,000. The better than expected July jobs report lowered the unemployment rate to 5.4%. 
Right now, there are two names in Georgia, one Republican, one Democrat, that have Georgia officials and voters waiting, wanting to hear if they are indeed running for office in 2022. Herschel Walker and Stacey Abrams. And joining me right now is Chuck Todd, moderator of NBC's Meet the Press, which returns this Sunday morning. Chuck, we want to begin with Herschel. And his decision has kind of held up this Georgia Senate process on the Republican side. We haven't heard from him yet as far as a decision goes, but another Republican, Gary Black, who is very well connected, very well respected in the state, is right. starting to take some jabs at him. Do Georgia Republicans want Walker in or out, or has a decision already been made, do you think? Well, I don't, I don't know of an establishment Republican figure in Georgia or Washington that wants Walker in. The only people that want Walker in uh, have the last name of Trump, and that's what's happened here. And I'll tell you this, if, there, if Herschel Walker has made a mistake, it's letting this linger, because you've seen this oppo research that has circulated about his personal life and various things. It isn't coming from Democrats. It's coming from Republicans, Jeff. It's pretty clear to me that that is what McC Team McConnell, Mitch McConnell, who's certainly basically the unofficial quarterback of the Senate Republican effort, if you will, to, to get control of the Senate. He's met with David Perdue to try to convince him, uh, Kelly Leffler to get back in. Um, you know, keep an eye on both of those. So uh, I, I, there's definitely not a lot of appetite for Walker to get into this race beyond anybody with the last name of Trump. And it looks to me like the, you know, Let's see what, what Herschel does. But every day he doesn't get in tells me, um, tells me this is, uh, this is going to become a problem, uh, a bigger problem for him. Well, it's been anticipated for a while that Stacey Abrams would challenge Governor Kemp in a rematch of 2018. However, she recently announced a nationwide tour uh, to talk about politics and social justice. There are no stops in Georgia. Yeah. I, do you find that to be curious? I did. I'm so, I'm so glad you brought this up. It was one of those things that caught my eye, and um, even while I was on my little uh, respite, Olympic respite, if you will, um, I'm sitting there going, well, this is a curious timing. This is curious timing if you are going to run in a statewide race to be to this. Now, now you could make an argument, Stacey Abrams would probably say, well, this race is going to be nationalized whether I go on a tour or not. And there's probably some argument to that. I, and she's still probably the strongest Democrat they could get. But yeah, I, I, I saw that and I thought, boy, that, it, you know, it only partisanizes you more, yeah. right? And at the end of the day, it really is, to be, what, what is your theory of how you win in Georgia? And if, if she believes it's about getting out your own vote, then maybe this isn't that harmful. But it, it I, I put it this way, I, I sort of, I arched my eyebrow on it when I saw it. Yeah. Governor Kemp here this week with uh, some, some jabs at the Atlanta mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, saying that police officers in our city here, Atlanta, need to be focused on crime and street racing, which is a huge issue here, instead of enforcing mask yeah. mandates. It, you know, Yogi Berra has said, you know, it was deja vu all over again, but here we are. I mean, this looks like last year all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, politics begins to take a very familiar lilt right now with masks and mandates and all of that. I'll tell you this, though. I think COVID is a problem for every chief executive, whether you're a governor, a president, a mayor, because you have a populace out here right now that's upset. The vaccinated are upset that they have to go back to this. They're mad. Some of them are mad at the unvaccinated. Some of them are mad at, at their leaders for not pushing it hard enough. The unvaccinated are upset that these mandates might have to come back, and they're sitting there going, they want to blame, you know, big government, or they want to blame the migrants, or they want to blame the media or, or medical professionals. But it's a, t it's a, it's a, it's an ugly stew here, if you will, uh, Jeff. Which, and I, and I, if you look across the board. Every chief executive's numbers have softened in the last month, right. and it's all coincided with the rise of the Delta variant here. So, look, I, I, I do feel like every chief executive has decided to play base politics with this because it's it's about the only the only move politically they think they have. I, it's a short term it's a short term solution to problems, but I think that that's a recipe for long term long term agita if you're not careful. Meet the press returns Sunday morning at ten right here on Eleven Alive. Chuck Todd, thanks, appreciate it. You got it, buddy. Coming up next, the reveal investigates a dangerous decision at Hartsfield Jackson how the choice to build new gates could cost precious minutes when emergencies happen. News, weekdays, 5 to 7.
Just Lee, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Just Lee, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport is once again the world's busiest with seven and a half million passengers now flying through ATL every month. So why did the airport bulldoze its busiest firehouse, the one closest to the domestic terminal? Reveal Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe discovered that decision caused ambulance response times to take off. Atlanta 911. What's the address of your emergency? Airport. By Atlanta Airport. Yeah, Atlanta Airport. Airport 911. Walking into the terminal, there was a family maybe 50 yards in front of us also walking in. I heard something. It sounded like somebody dropped luggage. And then we watched this woman fall. So I took off running. There is a woman who has fallen and is her North Daily Level 1 airport parking deck. She was non-responsive and wasn't breathing, and so I called 911 while my brother went to go find an AED inside the airport. One was running, one was calling, and I was doing compressions. Did help arrive immediately? No. Fire Station 32 would have been the closest rescue unit that morning last December. So why didn't Engine 32 and other rescue units get there sooner? because the firehouse was gone. The airport bulldozed Station 32 a year ago to add passenger gates. There were five rescue stations ringing Atlanta's airport. The closest to the domestic terminal, Fire Station 32. With an advanced life support fire engine and an ambulance, it has a drive time of less than one minute to the middle of the terminal gates. But now, Fire Station 32 is gone. The next closest fire station is on the other end of the airfield, Fire Station 24. It has a drive time to the middle of the T gates of more than five minutes. That adds four minutes 
to the total response time. The next closest station is on the south end of the airfield, Fire Station 40. It has a drive time to the middle of the T gates of more than seven minutes. That adds six minutes to the total response time to the domestic terminal from the now closed Fire Station 32. The city said the loss of the firehouse is temporary, and in the meantime, they're staging personnel and equipment inside the concourse and along the terminal roadway, and they're confident the airport will not experience any degradation in services. Did you break your leg? Just hours after the airport released that statement, a 76-year-old passenger fell in line for the main security checkpoint. It's been about 12 minutes since the Yeah, they're notoriously slow. I don't know if she fell over somebody's baggage or what, but it looks like her left hip is dislocated. 39 minutes. We're still standing by for the ambulance with the uh, stretcher. Are they anywhere close? Where are they coming from? The injured passenger was forced to sit on the floor in the middle of the main terminal for a full hour with a dislocated hip because there was no ambulance available. So that tells me you only have one ambulance working today? Still not enough to cover. When you got 65,000 employees, 250,000 passengers coming through. But you already know that. <laughs> The documented drive time for Medic 1 from the now closed Station 32 would have been 57 seconds. I don't know what their ETA is, but we need to get this lady up off this floor. Instead, it took more than an hour and a half and three tries, ultimately getting an ambulance from another city. We're still waiting on a mass transport. This is the busiest, is the busiest airport in the world. They got one damn we analyzed data from thousands of medical calls at the airport before and after the closure of Station 32. The displaced EMS units are now taking 65% longer. That's an extra 3 minutes and 40 seconds per medical run when every second counts. Construction on the replacement for Station 32 is slated to begin soon in a different location near the South Economy lot, but it won't be done until the end of 2022, leaving Atlanta's airport with without a rescue station near the busy domestic terminal for two and a half years. So why doesn't the airport prioritize ambulances, even making them park behind fire trucks? Because Hartsfield Jackson's operating certificate depends on how quickly fire trucks can get to the runways, not ambulances. Here is some perspective. The 76 year old passenger waited an hour and 35 minutes for an ambulance which is longer than the flight from Atlanta to New Orleans. Temperatures today held in the mid 80s this afternoon, and that was just a little bit below the average. We should be around 90 for this time of year. And once we get through tomorrow, I'm thinking we'll hold in the upper 80s again with a few scattered showers around. Then we'll return into those 90s. And you see that really hot air is still out uh, out to the west of us, but that's going to start spilling our way. And once we make it into the low 90s here on Sunday, I really think for the rest of the week next week, we will make it up into those lower 90s right at 90 or 91 degrees, but right there into those lower 90s. So it's been kind of nice seeing these 80s and temperatures below average the last few days, but we'll, we'll get back to the hot stuff going into next week. And we're also going to be watching the rain chances as well. It's going to be that heat and humidity kind of mixing together to give us a few of those pop up showers. So here's what we're watching with that average for this time of year, 90 degrees. You can see that's the uh, white line you see there. 88 is going to be our high on Saturday, so just a couple of degrees below the average, but then we're back to average Sunday, one degree above average Monday, then back to average again on Tuesday and also on Wednesday. Now let's talk about the moisture. You know, we've got this blue color over us today, uh, and that's where we have seen uh, hardly any showers around. That's the drier air that's in place tomorrow. See how it kind of starts turning yellow and green. That's just the moisture content in the air coming up a little bit more. You know, it's not going to be a lot of rain, but we're just talking about a 40% chance for some scattered showers and then the drier air starts filtering in again on Sunday shown here by the blue air rain chance just down to 20%, 20% again on Monday, but then back into Tuesday, see how the yellows and greens start coming back. That's the indicator of more moisture content in our atmosphere, and that's going to coincide with rain chances going back up to about 30% here for Tuesday, really through Friday with that uh, rain chance at about 30%. And that's going to be that just scattered afternoon and evening variety of showers. So this is how that kind of matches up with those rain chances, 40% chance on Saturday. 
down to 20% chance Sunday and Monday. That's when that slightly drier air is in place. Then back to 30% Tuesday and Wednesday as the atmosphere moistens up just a little bit more. So here's what we're watching with our headlines. We are going to see a few more showers around on Saturday. The rain chance at 40%, not raining everywhere all day long, just the afternoon and evening variety. And then we'll see the lower rain chances coming in for the first part of next week uh, with a 20% chance for showers, then back to 30% for the middle and end of the week. And temperatures, yep, they're headed back into the lower 90s. Also watch a couple of systems out in the tropics. Uh, this first one has a low risk of developing over the next two to five days, a moderate risk for developing for this one that's coming off the coast of Africa, still really far away. So no real threats or impacts for us here in the United States, but we'll keep an eye on it just in case it does start to get a little better organized and move toward us. 88 for a high Saturday, and then the lower 90s come back. 90 degrees Sunday, 91 Monday with only a 20% chance for showers Sunday and Monday, back to a 30% chance Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and each day those high temperatures make it into the lower 90s. Chris, thank you. Tonight, the conviction against former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger is being upheld after she was found guilty of killing her neighbor in his home. This means her appeal has been denied and she will continue to serve her prison sentence. A three judge panel in Texas upheld her conviction, ruling that there was sufficient evidence in the jury trial for the conviction. Geiger was convicted in the 2018 fatal shooting of Botham Jean, who lived in the same apartment building. Geiger says she mistook Jean's apartment for her own and thought he was a burglar. She will be eligible for parole in 20. 24. The Department of Justice defending the CDC's new eviction moratorium. The Alabama and Georgia chapters of the National Association of Realtors filing the suit to end the new eviction ban, arguing it is the same, quote, unlawful ban the Supreme Court recently said it did not believe the CDC had the legal authority to implement. But that one expired on July 31st. In court papers, the G DOJ says that this new moratorium is more targeted. It bans landlords from evicting tenants only in areas of the country with high or substantial COVID. 19 transmission. Still, that covers 90% of the U.S. population. The new moratorium is expected to end on October 3rd. And new tonight, a New Jersey gym owner, now the first person to plead guilty to assaulting a law enforcement officer during the Capitol riot on January 6th. Federal prosecutors say Scott Kevin Fairlam was one of the first rioters inside the Capitol after the windows were smashed. After leaving the building, they say Fairlam harassed a line of officers and blocked them from getting through the mob. His brother is a Secret Service agent. The CDC issuing a health alert over cake batter. Oh man, I'll tell you, if it's not one thing, it's another. It <laughs> cake batter, run for your lives. We'll have that story coming up next. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Live News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Just Lee, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as the, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. 
Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Well, if you plan on baking soon, you may want to hold off on licking that spoon <laughs> or your fingers for that matter. The CDC is investigating an outbreak of E. coli linked to cake mix. So according to the CDC, 16 people have been infected across 12 states so far oh, as of boy. July 27th. Seven of them have been hospitalized, so this is a pretty serious matter here. The FDA will determine the common brands and production facilities by looking at purchase records. It's likely many more people have been infected because it takes three to four weeks to determine if someone is part of an outbreak. The CDC is recommending people not to eat raw cake batter or cake mix. So not sure if it has anything to do with the eggs. All right, roughly 2 million dehumidifiers are being recalled because they could overheat and catch fire. They were all made by new wide tech. The company is aware of over 100 incidents. Fortunately, no one has been injured. The dehumidifiers were sold at Lowe's, Costco, Walmart, Menards and other retailers across the country from February 2009 through August 2017. Consumers should stop using them immediately and contact new Tech for a refund. Growing concerns over increasing COVID cases. Next, what the latest numbers are revealing and why there is no sign of the increasing numbers slowing down. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Just Lee, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. 
How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Live News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his. The U.S. economy added 943,000 jobs last month, while President Biden is using the numbers as evidence of the rebound. The recent rise of COVID infections and hospitalizations don't look well for this month. Alice Barr has the very latest from Washington. President Biden today touting good news for the economic recovery. 943,000 jobs created in the month of July as the U.S. unemployment rate fell to 5.4%. The Biden plan produces results, and the Biden plan is moving the country forward. But the new jobs report does not reflect the full impact of the Delta variant in the past few weeks as it's been driving COVID cases back up to levels not seen since February. The negative trend potentially discouraging both hiring and job seeking. If this kind of track continues the way it is right now, this could be as good as some of the job numbers get for the near to medium term. President Biden insists vaccines will keep us from winding up where we were last winter. America can beat the Delta variant just as we beat the original COVID-19. We can do this. As the virus surges, the vaccination rate is rising too. The White House today announcing 50% of all Americans are now fully vaccinated. Get vaccinated, please. It's safe. It works. It will save lives and maybe save your life. After offering incentives for holdouts to get the vaccine, the Biden administration now reportedly considering tougher tactics, including potentially withholding federal funds from places like nursing homes that don't require employees to be vaccinated. You're watching 11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News Prime Time starts now. Tonight in primetime at 9, the Atlanta mayoral race is heating up and one newcomer is coming out swinging where Walter Reeves stands on the issues you care about the most and why his name may sound familiar. And police hoping to make more progress in solving the Piedmont Park killing. They've identified another possible witness ahead of a busy weekend at the park. But first tonight, new numbers show Georgia is in the midst of the largest two week increase in COVID cases since the start of the pandemic, and it shows no signs signs of slowing down. Here's where we stand right now. COVID cases are double what they were two weeks ago. The last time our daily case average looked like this, it was early February. Our hospitals also saw the number of patients more than double in just two weeks. 18% of those who check in have COVID. Anything over 20% is considered dangerous. There is a bright spot. With cases rising, so are the number of new vaccines. The number of shots is going back up. Still, Georgia sits at only 41% fully vaccinated, which is well below the national average. Northwest Georgia is one part of the state where COVID-19 cases and the number of people in the hospital with the virus are rising quickly. And the hospitals there could soon be as stressed as they were this past winter. Joe Hinkey spoke with health experts there today about the situation. Compared to just a few weeks ago in Northwest Georgia, new COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and the rate at which people are testing positive for the virus are all up significantly, according to the health director for the region. In Floyd County, for example, 13% of people tested for COVID-19 in the last 14 days tested positive. For context, according to the World Health Organization, a test positivity rate above 10% suggests extra precautions are needed. 20% and up is considered dangerous. Floyd County is still shy of that, but trending toward the dangerous level. For hospitalizations in Georgia's Region C, which covers much of the northwest state line with Alabama, 17% of hospital patients have COVID-19. Today, the Georgia Department of Public Health Director from Northwest Georgia shared with me what he is hearing from doctors. They're very concerned. We're seeing very high numbers in the hospital and the ICUs too now, unfortunately. People on ventilators, unfortunately. And, and it's 
Unfortunately, the hospitalizations we're seeing are in younger people. Dr. Gary Voscio said area hospitals have not yet needed to divert patients away or delay elective surgeries as they needed to in January, but the area is inching closer to returning to that scenario. And Dr. Voscio also tells me most of the people that are testing positive for the virus right now or being hospitalized are not vaccinated. He says, of course, right now that is your best defense and anyone with questions should have a conversation with their primary care doctor. As schools begin to reopen here in Metro Atlanta and across the nation, most states, including Georgia, are leaving it up to local schools to decide whether or not to require masks. Today, Governor Brian Kemp doubled down on his opposition to a statewide mask mandate for schools while visiting students and staff at a school in Cherokee County. 11 Alive's Brittany Kleinpeter had the chance to ask him about it today. During his visit at this elementary school in Cherokee County today, Governor Kemp said that he continues to have the same concerns about mandates and is planning on leaving that decision up to local educators and keeping it out of the hands of government. Every school is different. There are different neighborhoods and different counties. You know, they're rural, they're suburban, they're urban. And, you know, I for one have been for the most part when I could be a local control governor when it comes to education. The governor adding he trusts the school system because he believes they've adequately handled coronavirus issues over the last 15 months. We're doing the same thing we did last year. We're trusting the local school systems, the local boards to work with their parents, work with their administration and make good decisions for each individual school. According to the Associated Press, about 30% of public schools in Georgia have some kind of mask mandate. Masks are optional in the rest. Some parents have told 11 Alive it's led kids who opt to wear a mask to be bullied. We asked Governor Kemp about it. Well, look, if, if I was that parent, I'd be talking to the principal at the school and the teachers and making sure that that's not happening. I and mean, I'm very confident the local systems can deal with that. The governor and the first lady said they chose to visit Ball Ground Elementary today to express their gratitude to teachers and staff for their resilience and dedication over the last year. The visit comes at a time when thousands of students across the state are heading back to the classroom. And as the governor faces pressure from fellow Republicans, to ban mask mandates in schools. We have in-depth resources on our, web so on our website for you right now. There's information about how to register for a vaccine or find a walk-up location close to you. Again, that's all on 11alive.com. An Atlanta candidate for mayor who finished surprisingly high in our poll last week is making some news tonight. Walter Reeves is touting some rough and legally questionable measures to fight crime in the city. Doug Richards has more on Reeves and why he's polling so high. Say your name for me, please. My name is Walter Reeves, Atlanta mayoral candidate. Walter Reeves is new to Atlanta and new to politics. Yet in our 11 Alive poll last week, Reeves was a surprise third place finisher behind Kasim Reed and Felicia Moore, barely ahead of two Atlanta city council members. Ban criminally insane elements from the city. Reeves told us how he aims to combat crime in Atlanta. All you need is a barbed wire, uh, construction trailers, uh, uh, lots of um, uh, straight jackets and even more Thorazine. Reeves told us he wants to bust such elements to Milledgeville, historic home to a state-run mental hospital. When they get there, uh, the criminally insane elements will be uh, booted out of the bus with a hard kick. A hard kick? Yes, sir. From uh, somebody's foot? Yes. This candidate for mayor happens to share a name. Hey everybody, I'm Walter Reeves at Woodlands Garden in Decatur, Georgia. With a folksy celebrity gardening enthusiast. You know, I think that every landscape needs a fruiting plant in it. This Walter Reeves has been a media presence for decades with gardening tips on TV and radio. I do not have any uh, uh, gardening uh, skills whatsoever. But you do have his name. Uh, yes, sir, I do. Reeves the candidate and Reeves the gardener have met. By text, Reeves the gardener tells us of Reeves the candidate. He's a nice guy, but I don't think he has the experience needed to be mayor. Do you think that people are mistaking you for the gardening expert when they say that they're going to support you? Uh, that could happen, yes. Developing now, Atlanta police have identified another possible witness in the Piedmont Park killing. That jogger coming forward today to speak with detectives. It's now been 10 days since Katie Jonas and her dog were killed at the park, but so far police have not arrested anyone. Joe Ripley spent the day at Piedmont Park getting the story. 
Yeah, 10 days later and Katie Jonas's death still rings fresh here. You, every so often you will see people stop by this memorial uh, and just stare in sadness and disbelief over what happened here. Her death also sparking action right now from Atlanta City Council. You can't miss the memorial sitting at the entrance to Piedmont Park. It was here more than a week ago that 40 year old Katie Jonas and her dog Bowie were killed. Jonas was last seen walking her dog across the Rainbow Crosswalk close to the park. While there's still no arrest, police say they are making progress. Just hours after releasing this photo of another possible witness today, police say the jogger has come forward to speak to detectives. Cameras have been a point of contention in this case. Those demanding answers say there should be more cameras in the park. The cameras that have been labeled as, as having kind of outlived their usefulness I think are a natural place for us to look as it, relate, as it relates to replacing them. Um, and this is one piece of a citywide conversation about making sure that we have coverage um, that, that will help keep residents and businesses safe. Atlanta City Councilman Matt Westmoreland says Jonas' killing has rocked the city, causing city council to consider adding extra police patrols and updated cameras in and around the park. If you have any information in this case, you're asked to call 911 or contact Crime Stoppers Atlanta. You do not have to give your name. There's also a $20,000 reward available for any information leading to an arrest and indictment of Katie's killer. Since the brutal murder of Katie Jonas in Piedmont Park, there have been five other homicides around Atlanta, all of those to the south and west. They don't seem to be related in any way, but police say they have not made any arrest in those cases either. So far this year, there have been 89 homicides in Atlanta. Last year at this time, it was 56. Well, getting around the city is getting a little pricey. 47 bucks. Uh, new fare just went up to $55 while we were speaking. Demand at an all time high for ride shares like Uber and Lyft, and there aren't enough drivers to go around. That means longer waits and higher rates. And they are making more money than the driver. Can you believe that? It is just putting a, a finger of honey in the mouth of a driver. Tonight, after the Olympics on 11 Alive, we investigate what it means for the price you pay for rideshare services. You know, it's not a bad Friday night here in Atlanta where we have dry weather conditions here. Temperature is pretty comfortable. Yeah, it's still warm, but not too muggy. It's a really comfortable night. I hope you're out there uh, able to get outside and enjoy it, but I'm glad you're inside watching TV right now. Well, we don't have any rain here in our area in North Georgia. There are really only a couple of isolated showers out there right now. Nothing much at all. We're dry here in town. We have these couple of showers over into Alabama near I-20 and just south of I-20. Cleburne County there where we have an isolated shower that has developed. We have a few other showers that we've been watching in North Georgia. This one right there in the North North Floyd, Chattooga County line that's falling apart. A few other showers just popping there in Dalton, also in Murray County and in the western parts of Fannin County. Those are drifting to the north, not moving our way. And, you know, it's nothing really organized or anything like that. These showers just kind of pop up with the heating and what little humidity that's out there is helping some of these showers to pop up. We do think the moisture content in the air tomorrow, though, is going to increase as we have this moisture down to the south area of low pressure trying to spread a little bit of moisture our way as well as this system out to the west that's trying to move into our area too and that's going to increase our rain chances as we uh, go through the daytime hours on Saturday mainly in the afternoon with about a 40% chance for showers here's a live look at our tower cam I know it's kind of dark I was just I just had this uh, moved over to the west taking a look at the sunset in Athens tonight uh, it was a nice sunset, but it was kind of obscured by a few clouds there on the horizon. Stay with us. We're going to talk about uh, those rain chances for your Saturday and if that rain chance will move out for at least the second half of the weekend. All right, Chris, thank you. Coming up in prime time, making your vote count. It is something that's important even at an early age. We're taking a look at a new program inspiring a new generation of voters. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs, expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. 
Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as the, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story New tonight, thousands of teenagers are gearing up for a huge event over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. There'll be live music, games, prizes, and voter education. It's an initiative to uh, aimed at teaching teens that are still too young to vote that everything they need to know will come right there at that facility, at that event, um, so they'll be prepared when they do reach that age to vote. Caitlin Ross has a story that you'll only see from the stations of 11 Alive. The teens taking this democracy class want voting to be just as exciting as attending a football game or a soccer match. That's why they're so excited to have the training at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I am freedom, liberty, and justice for all. I wonder what the blood from my ancestors strengthened me to truly stand tall. 17-year-old Zakai Beck has thought and written a lot about his right to vote, even though he won't be eligible to until next year. A lot of people feel powerless, so they feel like they don't know what to do because they don't know how to do or how to go about it. The Democracy Atlanta class is being taught by Rock the Vote in the New Georgia Project, nonpartisan nonprofits aimed at engaging people in the voting process. Beck says they've learned a lot about how groups of voters have been disenfranchised through the years. If there's a cycle that we want to break, we have to take action towards that. And that starts off with letting people know the steps, what they want to do, what they need to do. We do nothing in our society to really prepare 18-year-olds to, uh, to become voters when they become eligible. Carolyn DeWitt heads up Rock the Vote and says getting kids involved in the process before they turn 18 is the best way to get them to turn up at the polls once they do. I hope that I keep moving forward and never falter nor fall. I am freedom, liberty, and justice for all. All Atlanta public school students will be invited to a rally on September 28th to learn about the voting process. They'll have live music, games, and a whole lot of democracy. They're going to teach people how to register to vote and then become poll workers if they're interested once they turn 18. Dry weather here in Atlanta right now. Nice night where we have comfortable temperatures. It's not too humid. We're falling from the 80s into the 70s right now at this hour. Still holding right at 80 degrees in town, but many areas are already in the 70s. And we have a couple of isolated showers in some spots. We showed you this one uh, on the Alabama line here, just over the line, but just north of Folsom right there in Cleburne County, just a little bit south of I-20. And then we're also watching some of these showers in North Georgia. Georgia, where we had one that's falling apart right on the Rome and Tatuga County line. And then the National Weather Service just put out a special statement on this cell. I know that doesn't look that impressive, but up in Fannin County, the western part of Fannin County, close to that North Gilmer line, it had 40 to 50 mile an hour winds with it. It's showing signs of weakening now as it drifts up toward the north. But that just kind of goes to show you here with some of these cells, even though they're small and not impacting a lot of people, they could have some heavy rain. Another one developing right here just south or right near Dalton. And these are just pop-up showers. It's not an organized area of rain or a line of storms, a squall line or anything like that uh, that is moving through. So we have this moisture here uh, to the south and east of us. That's that stalled out front area of low pressure moving along that, but it didn't really send us a lot of moisture today. We will see more moisture coming into our area tomorrow. Also watching this little system out to the west. 
and we'll see our rain chance coming up a little bit during the day tomorrow too. Here's a live look at our tower cam. Braves play in the Nationals. You can see folks there in the stadium at Truist Park where um, it, it, they're having a pretty comfortable night with, for baseball. No rain around, just a little bit on the on the mild side, but again, not too muggy out there either. In fact, it's 78 right now in Marietta just north of the stadium. We're 80 here in town. Most places though outside the city are in the 70s. Rome, you're still holding on to 80 degrees though. So warm, but we're relatively comfortable out there tonight. Next hour, we're moving back down into the 70s and then early in the morning, we start off in the low 70s. We will see some sunshine in the morning mixing in with a few clouds and then partly cloudy skies at 9 o'clock as those temperatures start to rise back into the mid 70s. We'll eventually top off uh, in the upper 80s tomorrow, right at 88 degrees, but we're going to see more clouds mixing in with that sunshine and in the afternoon is going to be our main time frame that we will see about a 40% chance for some scattered showers to develop and, and we can have some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning, but we don't really expect anything to be severe out of this. Here we are in the morning. Dry weather conditions here at lunchtime. A few more clouds there. You see some of that moisture coming in from the west and as that moves our way, as, as I mentioned there, it's not an organized line or anything. It's just enough moisture and enough of a little bit of a, some instability there to cause a few showers to pop up. And, we've, and we're going to go with about that 40% chance for scattered showers. Then on Sunday, the rain chance comes back down. It's going to be dry in the morning, lunchtime dry. And then in the afternoon, just a little green showing up here. So we're going to go with about a 20% chance for showers as those temperatures move back up into the lower 90s. All right, here's an update on the tropics. We now have three potential systems we're watching. Tonight at 5 and 6, we are telling you about just two. But now this one has just kind of developed there. These two in the central Atlantic that you see highlighted in yellow have a really low risk of developing over the next two to five days. The one coming off the uh, coast of Africa, that's the one that looks a little more promising for development there between a 30 and 50% chance of developing over the next five days. Uh, all of these are way too far out there uh, to know whether or not they'll have any impact on us, but we'll keep watching them as they either fall apart or get better organized traveling across the Atlantic. 88 for a high tomorrow, 40% chance for showers, and then down to a 20% chance Sunday and Monday, but the temperatures move back into the low 90s and then even with rain chances coming back to 30 percent Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, our temperatures will still hold in the lower 90s. All right, Chris, thank you. Tonight we continue our exploration of the Olympic host country. We take you inside one of Japan's popular tourist attractions and a new way to experience art, the Digital Art Museum. Here's Cheryl Preheim. Explore Japan, sponsored by the Georgia Department of Public Health. It is the world's first digital art museum, and it's based on the theme, Borderless. There are no ropes to stand behind or signs to tell you not to touch anything. The exhibits move and interact with visitors. Some art projections react to your touch. It's immersive, and it's designed to make you feel like you're a part of the displays. There are areas where you help create the art around you. It's been so popular since it opened about two years ago that even when the Olympics are not in the city, there are long lines. Everywhere you look, there is an Instagram-worthy picture or video, which is part of the draw here. It's a unique digital art experience in our digital age. The new school year is here for many, but while some students are excited, others are not. We're taking a closer look at how schools are planning to support children as they get readjusted to the classroom. Weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. 
Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his... Mercedes-Benz Stadium is working to help Georgians get vaccinated against COVID-19. Tomorrow, you'll be able to get your shot while attending the Falcons open practice. Pfizer doses will be offered for all eligible fans who have a ticket to the practice. You can get your shot between 1 and 3 p.m. on the Sky Bridge. Practice is set for 2 to 4 p.m. Right now, only 41% of Georgians are fully vaccinated. While some kids may be excited to finally get back to the classroom, experts say that may not be the case for all. Liza Lucas gives us a closer look at how kids are faring amid the ongoing pandemic and how schools plan to support students as the school year unfolds. By the second semester, motivation was down, their grades were starting to fall. What Dr. Janine Janot works with students who are struggling or need extra support. And while she says there was a growing need for mental health support prior to COVID-19, she says the need this past year has been huge. What students were telling me was they didn't care anymore. And this was really unsettling to students because what I'd always heard in the past was, you know, I may look like I don't care, but I really care. I just can't figure out what I need to do. Dr. Janot attributes such feelings to burnout, but says kids on the whole have been really suffering in the wake of the pandemic. The latest Kids Count report gives us a little idea of how Georgia kids are doing. According to July data, nearly a third of families surveyed report kids feeling nervous, anxious, or on edge, while 24% feel down, depressed, or hopeless. And Dr. Janot is concerned some kids didn't get a real break this summer amid efforts to deal with learning loss. Well, the summer was the perfect opportunity to take a break and recover. So any kids who were pushed into or pushed themselves into doing more work this summer, um, I, I'm afraid they'll walk through the door still burned out. 11 Alive checked in with Metro Atlanta districts to get a better idea of how schools will support students this year. Atlanta Public Schools is hiring 10 additional psychologists and 25 more social workers. Gwinnett also doubling social worker staff to accommodate the need. Part of Fulton County School strategy includes a text for help tool, while Paulding County will have crisis text line cards available for all middle and high school students. Just a snapshot of some of the efforts in place. My deep his hope is that when those students walk through the door that their mental health is priority. Now we also want to share a few resources that experts say students, parents and teachers can take advantage of. The freeyourfeels.org website has a lot of resources for back to school stress. Experts also recommend the uh, Not No Talk app, which was developed by some siblings here out of Atlanta. And don't forget the Georgia Crisis and Access Line. That's available 24 hours a day, tw uh, seven days a week, rather, so 24 seven. The numbers there on your screen, it's 1-800-715-4255. You can find additional resources inside Liza's story on 11alive.com as well. Happening tomorrow morning, dozens of COVID-19 survivors will march at St. Luke's Episcopal Church. They're working to remember coronavirus victims there. 
local health experts will be there urging Georgians to get the COVID vaccine. The organizer of the march is Tanya Washington. She's a COVID survivor and her father died of COVID in March, even though he was vaccinated. He got the virus from an unvaccinated co-worker. This march will take place from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. tomorrow. We'll have much more on that march tonight on 11 Alive News after the Olympics. A lot of connected people asking a lot of questions about Georgia's political landscape right now. Is Herschel Walker running? Is Stacey Abrams running? Just not a lot of answers out there right now. We're talking about it all with NBC's Chuck Todd next. Research is stories. You're always going to get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Chesley, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11. After being canceled last year and pushed back this year, the 85th annual Dogwood Festival is finally happening. But like so many different events during this pandemic, it's not quite the same. 11 Alive's Latasha Given spent the day in Piedmont Park to explain. There are a lot of changes because of COVID and security. But get this, organizers said they only had three months to plan the entire festival because the available date options kept changing. But everyone I talked to out here are just thrilled to be at an outdoor event. It feels great to be able to walk around and actually come to a festival and event outdoors. And it's been a long time. And I'm glad to be here. Um, it was I was happy just to get out and be able to in the air and see people. The 85th annual Dogwood Festival comes as a relief to many. I mean, it's just great for everybody. Executive Director Brian Hill says the festival gives artists and entertainers a creative release they needed after a year of canceled shows and events due to COVID. I mean, the performers were so excited when we actually got 
got a date, and the artists, I mean, they've been, they've been working for a year and a half and had nowhere to show their wares, nowhere to sell it. So they've got a stock of incredible art that people are going to see, and they're showing it for the first time. And that includes students' artwork, too, being sold through a silent auction. This was the year that if you ever want to support students, this is the year to do it because so many of them have had such an unusual year. You know, you're working at home, you're not getting that day-to-day -day input from your teacher and your peers as well. But there are other changes this year because of the virus. Hand sanitizer stations are added along with better spacing. We've, we've got the, the uh, hand sanitizing stations everywhere. We put an awful lot of distance this year between the vendors so that people won't get real crowded. And a larger stage for musical acts. I got my uh, two injections in May, so um, I'm good. And it is outdoors, and it's warmer, and the air is circulating around, so um, I think we're okay. We're, we're stopping two hours earlier in the evening than we have in the past, and we've got a, 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 a Ad good amount, adequate amount of police and security. Some you'll see, some you won't. I love a lot of the art. I love that, yes. So, and the food is good, too. I'm, I'm glad to see a lot of people without masks walking. I'm glad to see people with masks walking. So, I think it's going to be great. I don't think, I don't have really any concerns. One other change is the festival ends two hours earlier each night. Now, there are over 200 artists and entertainers here, so there is literally something for everyone. Back to you. Tonight, the Biden administration has extended the federal student loan uh, payment moratorium until January 31st. The announcement comes just weeks before the pause was set to expire at the end of September. In a statement, the Department of Education called this the final extension. The federal student loan payment moratorium started in March of last year when Congress passed the CARES Act. Since then, both President Biden and former President Trump signed executive orders to extend the pause. The new jobs report is out today showing American employers added 943,000 jobs in the month of July. Hotels and restaurants added 327,000 jobs last month, followed by local public schools adding 221,000. The better than expected jobs July report lowered the unemployment rate to 5.4%. We've been tracking a few showers uh, in North Georgia. Nothing really here in the metro Atlanta area. In fact, the National Weather Service just put out a special statement on uh, some of these showers up in uh, the uh, Gilmer County, actually Fannin County area that are getting a little bit stronger uh, with 40 to even 50 mile an hour winds. Not impacting a lot of people, but just some heavy rain and some strong winds with that. Here in Atlanta, we're looking good. Uh, there's that rain that we're talking about uh, right there in parts of Murray County that's beginning to develop here in the western parts of Fannin, uh, right there on the Gilmer County line. That's where we have some of those showers that have some heavy rain with them and they're producing a little bit of, uh, you know, of some wind with that too. Again, 40 to 50 mile an hour winds. That's a little bit to the west of the Blue Ridge area. No rain here in Atlanta or on the south side. We do have showers in southeast Georgia, more showers back in Alabama. We're keeping an eye on those as they try to get closer to us tomorrow, increasing our rain chances a little bit. Here's a live look in Blue Ridge. This is also in Fannin County here where the roads are dry right now in Blue Ridge because that rain is just to the west of the downtown area. Stay with us. We'll keep an eye on those showers in North Georgia and have more on the timeline of when additional showers will develop tomorrow. All right, Chris, we will stay tuned for that. Thank you. Well, after a brief hiatus for the Olympics, Meet the Press returns Sunday morning over on 11 Alive. There are a lot of big Georgia political stories developing right now, as usual. Our Jeff Hollinger talked about it all with NBC's Chuck Todd. Right now, there are two names in Georgia, one Republican, one Democrat, that have Georgia officials and voters waiting, wanting to hear if they are indeed running for office in 2022. Herschel Walker and Stacey Abrams. And joining me right now is Chuck Todd, moderator of NBC's Meet the Press, which returns this Sunday morning. Chuck, we want to begin with Herschel, and his decision has kind of held up this Georgia Senate process on the Republican side. We haven't heard from him yet as far as a decision goes, but another Republican, Gary Black, who is very well connected, very well respected in this state, is right. starting to take some jabs at him. Do Georgia Republicans want Walker in or out, or has a decision already been made, do you think? Well, I don't, I don't know of an establishment Republican figure in Georgia or Washington that wants Walker in. The only people that want Walker in uh, have the last name of Trump, and that's what's happened here. And I'll tell you this, if, there, if Herschel Walker has made a mistake, it's letting this linger. 
because you've seen this oppo research that has circulated about his personal life and various things it isn't coming from democrats it's coming from republicans jeff let's see what what herschel does but every day he doesn't get in tells me um tells me this is uh, this is going to become a problem, uh, a bigger problem for him. Well, it's been anticipated for a while that Stacey Abrams would challenge Governor Kemp in a rematch of 2018. However, she recently announced a nationwide tour uh, to talk about politics and social justice. There are no stops in Georgia. Yeah. I, do you find that to be curious? I did. I'm so, I'm so glad you brought this up. It was one of those things that caught my eye. And um, even while I was on my little uh, respite, Olympic respite, if you will, um, I'm sitting there going, well, this is a curious timing. This is curious timing if you are going to run in a statewide race to be to this. Now, now you could make an argument. Stacey Abrams would probably say, well, this race is going to be nationalized whether I go on a tour or not. And there's probably some argument to that. I, and she's still probably the strongest Democrat they could get. But yeah, I, I, I saw that and I thought, boy, that, I, I, you know, it only partisanizes you more, yeah. right? And at the end of the day, it really is, to be, what, what is your theory of how you went in Georgia? And if, if she believes it's about getting out your own vote, then maybe this isn't that harmful. But it, it I, I put it this way, I, I sort of, I arched my eyebrow on it when I saw it. The Meet the Press returns Sunday morning at 10, right here on 11 Alive. Chuck Todd, thanks, appreciate it. You got it, buddy. Coming up next in prime time, the reveal investigates a dangerous decision at Hartsville Jackson International Airport. How the choice to build new gates could cause precious minutes when emergencies happen. Everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to... 
Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International Airport is once again the world's busiest with 7.5 million passengers now flying through the ATL every month. So why did the airport bulldoze its busiest firehouse, the one closest to the domestic terminal? The reveal's chief investigator Brendan Keith discovered that decision caused ambulance response times to take off. Atlanta 911. What's the address of your emergency? Airport. By Atlanta Airport. Yeah, Atlanta Airport. Airport 911. Walking into the terminal, there was a family maybe 50 yards in front of us also walking in. I heard something. It sounded like somebody dropped luggage. And then we watched this woman fall. So I took off running. There is a woman who has fallen and is her North Daily Level 1 airport parking deck. She was non-responsive and wasn't breathing, and so I called 911 while my brother went to go find an AED inside the airport. One was running, one was calling, and I was doing compressions. They were doing chest compressions right now. Midway through the call, I heard my dad say, she's not breathing, I can't find a pulse. You said she is breathing? No, she is not. She is not. Okay, I have one of them. We need help as quickly as possible. All right. It kind of felt like you're on your own until someone just happens to show up. Engine 32, medic 4, responding to the north lower level. Outside of door LN1, they're doing CPR on the patient. Did help arrive immediately? No. The heroic bystanders, including this Gwinnett High School CPR instructor, don't know if the woman lived or died because of health privacy laws. But we've discovered that Atlanta Airport's Engine 32 took seven minutes and 25 seconds to get to the scene after Nathan's call for help. The airport ambulance took nearly 14 minutes. Did you have any idea that there was a firehouse just 500 yards from you? Not even remotely. 500 yards, I mean, you can literally trot across the parking lot if you had to in that situation. Fire Station 32 would have been the closest rescue unit that morning last December. So why didn't Engine 32 and other rescue units get there sooner? because the firehouse was gone. The airport bulldozed Station 32 a year ago to add passenger gates. The airport will extend Concourse T with five gates. These new gates will help us accommodate more passengers and even more airlines. There were five rescue stations ringing Atlanta's airport. The closest to the domestic terminal, Fire Station 32. With an advanced life support fire engine and an ambulance, it has a drive time of less than one minute to the middle of the terminal gates. But now, Fire Station 32 is gone. The next closest fire station is on the other end of the airfield, Fire Station 24. It has a drive time to the middle of the T gates of more than five minutes. That adds four minutes to the total response time. The next closest station is on the south end of the airfield, Fire Station 40. It has a drive time to the middle of the T gates of more than seven minutes. That adds six minutes to the total response time to the domestic terminal from the now closed Fire Station 32. Atlanta's aviation and fire departments both refused to grant us another interview. Instead, the city said the loss of the firehouse is temporary, and in the meantime, they're staging personnel and equipment inside the concourse and along the terminal roadway, and they're confident the airport will not experience any degradation in services. Did you break your leg? Just hours after the airport released that statement, 13, can you check on, uh, a 76-year-old passenger fell in line for the main security. Checkpoint. It's been about 12 minutes since the Yeah, there are no torches. I don't know if she fell over somebody's baggage or what, but it looks like her left hip is dislocated. 39 minutes. I mean, we're still standing by for the ambulance with the uh, stretcher. Are they anywhere close? Where are they coming from? The injured passenger was forced to sit on the floor in the middle of the main terminal for a full hour with a dislocated hip because there was no ambulance available. So that tells me you only have one ambulance working today? Still not enough to cover. When you got 65,000 employees, 250,000 passengers coming through. Yep. But you already know that. <laughs> The documented drive time for Medic 1 from the now closed Station 32 would have been 57 seconds. I don't know what their ETA is, but we need to get this lady up off this floor. Instead, it took more than an hour and a half and three tries, ultimately getting an ambulance from another city. We're still waiting on our transport. This is the busiest airport in the world. 
We analyzed data from thousands of medical calls at the airport before and after the closure of Station 32. The displaced EMS units are now taking 65% longer. That's an extra three minutes and 40 seconds per medical run when every second counts. Airport communications to engine 32, med 4, respond to the south economy parking. Fire Station 32 would have been the closest to Thomas Lawson as he lay dying in the south economy lot last November. Engine 32 was sent from farther away and started CPR 22 minutes after his wife Ruth called 911. They were coming to the airport from the airport. And how come they don't know how to get around the airport? The reveal obtained this internal working group report from 2019, warning in advance that the loss of Station 32 would result in much longer response times and urging the airport to build its replacement next to and along with the five new passenger gates. The airport shelved those designs even though they were 100% complete, priced, permitted, and ready to be constructed. The working group considered three alternatives, including not re building the fire station at all, but none of the options included holding off on the demolition of the old fire station until a new one could be built elsewhere. The old fire station was demolished and we will be constructing this beautiful new one to support airport operations. Construction on the replacement for station 32 is slated to begin soon in a different location near the South Economy lot, but it won't be done until the end of 2022, leaving Atlanta's airport without a rescue station near the busy domestic terminal for two and a half years. So why doesn't the airport prioritize ambulances, even making them park behind fire trucks? Because Hartsfield Jackson's operating certificate depends on how quickly fire trucks can get to the runways, not ambulances. The FAA's regulations require all kinds of fire trucks, all kinds of firefighting foam within a distance of the runway, but there's no requirement for ambulances close to the terminal. Does that make any sense? It doesn't to me. That makes absolutely zero sense. It seems like there's such a huge oversight. Well, here's some additional perspective for you tonight. That 76 year old passenger waited an hour and 35 minutes for an ambulance. That's longer than a flight from Atlanta to New Orleans. We're still tracking a few showers up in far north Georgia right now in the western parts of Fannin County with uh, some areas of moderate to heavy rain and some gusty winds. Nothing's going on here in Atlanta. We are dry right now. We've been dry this evening and really most of us have been dry today. We haven't really seen much in the form of isolated showers developing. This green that you see on the south side, those are just false echoes. We were watching this uh, back near Folsom there in uh, parts of Cleveland and Randolph County. A few showers, very isolated and they're falling apart. But these have been holding together uh, for a little bit in the western parts of Fannin County. There you see Mineral Bluff and really just some pockets of moderate to heavy rain. National Weather Service said they were getting some indications though from radar that there were some 40 to 50 mile an hour winds with that. Here's Blue Ridge right here. There's Lake Blue Ridge right there and this is just to the west of the Blue Ridge area. Really that heaviest stuff more toward Higdon and north and west of Higdon as well. Here's a live look. This is our tower cam in Blue Ridge. You can see there what we're showing you on radar in Blue Ridge. It's dry. No rain is falling there, but that heaviest rain is just to the west of the downtown area. Our high today made it up to 86 degrees, still below average. You know, we've had a few days this week that haven't made it into the 90s. Uh, nobody's complaining. Pretty good. And the low relative, lower relative humidity today wasn't quite muggy either and just a little bit below the average. Also a little below average this morning when it was 71. We should be around 72 for this time of year and no rain at Hartsfield Jackson. And we still have that surplus that we're holding on to a little bit by about two and a half inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. All right, 90 degrees is our our average high temperature for this time of year. That's indicated by this white line here. I do think we'll have another day tomorrow with below average temperatures right there at about 88 degrees and then back to average Sunday, one degree above average Monday and then back to average on Tuesday and Wednesday as well with those temperatures right around 90 degrees. And you know we have the drier air in place today. Not many showers around. That's indicated by that blue color. Once we get into tomorrow, notice the yellows and greens coming back and that shows us where we have a little more moisture 
that's going to be moving in. Uh, so we're going to go with a 40% chance for showers tomorrow. Not raining all day. There will be a lot of dry uh, air or dry hours at times and then just scattered showers more in the afternoon. And then the blue comes back here on Sunday and where you see that blue color, that's when that drier air starts to push in here and the rain chances go back down to 20%. Same thing on Monday, 20% chance for showers. And then here comes a little bit of that moisture again on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, also into Friday of next week where we're going to see rain chances just coming up a little bit to about 30%. Enough moisture in the atmosphere to interact with those hot temperatures to give us a few scattered showers. And speaking of hot, we're going from 88 degrees tomorrow back up to 90 on Sunday with that lower rain chance at 20%, 20% chance Monday too at 91. And even with that moisture coming back and a few showers redeveloping here, the 30% chance to rain Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're still going to see those high temperatures pretty much each and every day hold in the lower 90s. Thing to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the, the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with you. Temperatures up to 88 tomorrow. Rain chances also up. We'll have about a 40% chance for some showers, mainly in the afternoon on Saturday. Then the rain chance comes down to 20% Sunday and Monday. High temperatures, though, back up to the lower 90s. And then holding on to those lower 90s Tuesday through Friday with the rain chance each afternoon right about 30%. Chris, thank you, and thank you so much for being with us. Remember, the news is always on on 11alive.com and inside our 11 Alive news app as well. Don't go anywhere. There's much more of headlines for you and also your forecast with Jeff and Chris right here on the ATL in just a few moments. Mark Dodd. 
they come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Live News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as the, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate. You're watching 11 Alive where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News Prime Time starts now. We begin tonight with a battle against COVID and doctors in Northwest Georgia growing more and more concerned that the surging infections they dealt with back during the winter is beginning to reappear. The number of cases and hospitalizations is escalating, but for now, the hospitals in that region have not yet hit the point of being overstressed, though they are beginning to teeter toward it. The doctors spoke with Joe Hankey. And they say this spike was avoidable with the unvaccinated making up the vast majority of people who have become ill. August 2020, Dr. Jennifer Barbary with Harbin Clinic in Floyd County first talked with 11 Alive. I hope that this doesn't continue for too much longer because uh, it is, I don't think it is sustainable. I think there's going to be a high degree of burnout. Since then, vaccines have become readily available to the point supply is higher than demand. But once again, in Northwest Georgia, cases, hospitalizations and COVID-19 positive test rates are all on the rise again. I think we're more scared this time. Uh, the virulence of the Delta variant has us a little bit concerned and just our low percentage of vaccinations throughout the state are definitely probably one of our greatest concerns. Currently in Georgia's hospital region C, covering Floyd County and much of the northern state line with Alabama, 17% of people hospitalized have COVID-19. If the trend continues, hospitals in northwest Georgia could face a situation like they did in January, when elective surgeries needed to be canceled and patients were diverted to other hospitals. What I think we're observing now is the rise is much more rapid. You know, we are seeing a much higher number of cases every day. Our hospitals are filling up so fast and, you know, we are 
I fear what the next few weeks may hold. Numbers are increasing. It's very worrisome. Dr. Gary Vocio is the Georgia Department of Public Health Director for Northwest Georgia. He's keeping an eye on positive test rates for COVID-19. Anything above 20 percent, which Northwest Georgia is inching toward, is considered dangerous. It's very significantly high numbers compared to what we experienced a few weeks ago. Uh, all of our counties are in the in the positive teen range, 15, 16, 20 percent of those. Voscio says it's too early to tell if hospitals will need to return to COVID emergency plans, but doctors are concerned. We reported uh, almost 6,000 cases in Georgia yesterday, and over the past four weeks, we have doubled those numbers every week for the past four weeks. So at an accelerated rate, we are seeing these positive COVID cases. And as cases and hospitalizations continue to significantly increase in Northwest Georgia, Dr. Barbary and Dr. Voscio tell me, of course, the best defense right now is getting vaccinated if you are not already. Joe Hankey reporting for us. Developing now, Atlanta police have identified another possible witness in the Piedmont Park killing. That jogger coming forward today to talk to detectives. It has been 10 days since Katie Jonas and her dog were killed in the park, but so far police have not arrested anyone. Here's 11 Alive's Joe Ripley reporting on some changes being considered at the park. You can't miss the memorial sitting at the entrance to Piedmont Park. It was here more than a week ago that 40-year-old Katie Jonas and her dog Bowie were killed. Jonas was last seen walking her dog across the Rainbow Crosswalk close to the park. While there's still no arrest, police say they are making progress. Just hours after releasing this photo of another possible witness today, police say the jogger has come forward to speak to detectives. Cameras have been a point of contention in this case. Those demanding answers say there should be more cameras in the park. The cameras that have been labeled as, as having kind of outlived their usefulness I think are a natural place for us to look as it, relate, as it relates to replacing them. Um, and this is one piece of a citywide conversation about making sure that we have coverage um, that, that will help keep residents and businesses safe. Atlanta City Councilman Matt Westmoreland says Jonas's killing has rocked the city, causing City Council to consider adding extra police patrols and updated cameras in and around the park. If you have any information in this case, you're asked to call 911 or Crime Stoppers in Atlanta. You don't have to give your name, and there is a $20,000 reward available for information leading to an arrest and the indictment of the killer. Getting around the city of Atlanta has become very expensive. 47 bucks. A uh, new fare just went up to $55 while we were speaking. Demand is at an all-time high for ride shares like Uber and Lyft, and there aren't enough drivers to go around. That means longer waits and higher rates. And they are making more money than the driver. Can you believe that? It is just putting a, a finger of honey in the mouth of a driver. Tonight, after the Olympics on 11 Alive, we investigate what it means for the price you pay for rideshare services. It's a nice night here in the metro area where we have dry weather conditions, no rain around. You know, pretty comfortable too. Uh, we've just dropped from the 80s now. Uh, well, it's still showing 80 for our temperature, but most areas have already dropped into the 70s. Uh, but we don't have any rain here in the metro area. There have only been just a few isolated showers out there tonight. Nothing here in Atlanta, but we had this one cell that we were watching just over the Alabama line near the Cleburne and Randolph line just south of I-20. Just an isolated shower that's falling apart. We have a few more showers though that are holding together pretty well uh, in parts of Fannin County. In fact, the National Weather Service earlier just put out a special statement on this cell that we see right there in Fannin County. That's getting close to the North Carolina line, actually the Tennessee line uh, here as well. As this is, I did have 40 to 50 mile an hour winds with it earlier and it's just drifting up to the north and we're just waiting for it to rain itself out. Here is Blue Ridge right there. There's Lake Blue Ridge. So this rain is really just to the north and west of the Blue Ridge area and that heaviest stuff is pretty much west of Higdon uh, and west of the McKaysville area uh, where we've had some of that heavier rain that's moving through. Here's a live look at our tower cam in Blue Ridge. The roads are dry there as we just showed you on radar kind of confirming this picture confirms what we just showed you there that the rain is west of the downtown area. Now take a look at the Almanac today. 86 degrees was our high still a little bit below the average by about four degrees. We should be at 90 for this time of year. Stay with us. We'll let you know 
know when we will make it back up to average and see those temperatures move into the 90s again. Chris, thank you. Events will take place across the country this weekend to honor those who lost loved ones who are fighting COVID themselves. Saturday morning, people will gather at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Atlanta, and one of the speakers, a woman mourning the loss of her father, she tells Hope Ford the trauma of losing her father is now her new normal. A childlike innocence arrests in Tanya Washington's home. We're going to make posters. But these arts and crafts are not just for play. To honor my father. Her father, Dr. Kerry Washington, a fully vaccinated psychologist. Like he called, he was like so excited, celebrating. Celebrating until he tested positive for COVID. Five days in, he was on 100% oxygen. Tani discovered one of his coworkers was unvaccinated. And I was like, what? And COVID positive. Did anyone notify my dad? No. No amount of forewarning could prepare Tanya for what was ahead. I was in head to toe PPE, and that's how I said goodbye to my dad and I held his hand while he took his last breath. Now his last moments. He and my daughter. Bounded in hardback. He was a proud papa. He loved her so much. And his daughter's heart colored with sadness. There's a lot of voicemails that I kept from him and I still hear the encouragement in my dad's voice. A child. Even through those voicemails. No matter what age, struggles to lose a parent. And it's a feeling Tanya wants to keep others from experiencing. So, so she'll tell their story at an upcoming event for COVID survivors, honoring her father. We just miss him terribly. While trying to save. We really do. Someone else's. Mercedes-Benz Stadium is working again to help get Georgians vaccinated against COVID. Tomorrow, you'll be able to get your shot while attending the Falcons open practice. How about that? That's a lot of fun. Pfizer doses will be offered for all eligible fans who have a ticket to practice. So you can get your shot between 1 and 3 p.m. on the Sky Bridge after you're yelling at the team. Practice is set for 2 to 4. Right now, only 41% of Georgians are fully vaccinated. Still to come this hour, The Reveal investigates a dangerous decision at Hartsfield-Jackson, how the choice to build new gates could cost precious minutes when emergencies occur. 11 Alive Morning News, weekdays 5 to 7. Just Lee, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs, expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. An Atlanta candidate for mayor who finished surprisingly high in our poll last week is making news tonight. Walter Reeves is touting some rough, rough and tough measures to fight crime in the city. But as people were polled about Walter Reeves, did they think they were voting for the Walter Reeves you're about to see? Or did they think they were beginning to be polled for the Walter Reeves who grows really fine tomatoes? Here's the story from 11 Alive's Doug Richards. Say your name for me, please. My name is Walter Reeves, Atlanta mayoral candidate. Walter Reeves is new to Atlanta and new to politics. Yet in our 11 Alive poll last week, Reeves was a surprise third place finisher behind Kasim Reed and Felicia Moore. 
barely ahead of two Atlanta City Council members. Ban criminally insane elements from the city. Reeves told us how he aims to combat crime in Atlanta. All you need is a barbed wire, uh, construction trailers, uh, uh, lots of um, uh, straight jackets and even more Thorazine. Reeves told us he wants to bus such elements to Milledgeville, historic home to a state-run mental hospital. When they get there, uh, the criminally insane elements will be uh, booted out of the bus with a hard kick. A hard kick? Yes, sir. From uh, somebody's foot? Yes. This candidate for mayor happens to share a name. Hey everybody, I'm Walter Reeves at Woodlands Garden in Decatur, Georgia. With a folksy celebrity gardening enthusiast. You know, I think that every landscape needs a fruiting plant in it. This Walter Reeves has been a media presence for decades with gardening tips on TV and radio. I do not have any uh, uh, gardening uh, skills whatsoever. But you do have his name. Uh, yes, sir, I do. Reeves the candidate and Reeves the gardener have met. By text, Reeves the gardener tells us of Reeves the candidate. He's a nice guy, but I don't think he has the experience needed to be mayor. Do you think that people are mistaking you for the gardening expert when they say that they're going to support you? Uh, that could happen, yes. I've been working with Doug Richards for 35 or 36 years, Chris. He should be taken to the woodshed on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, he, he needs to he needs to get a little woodshed for that one. That, that, that's quite a piece right there. <laughs> okay. Very interesting. It's all, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you for that. And I'm just going to move right along to weather here, where we have dry weather conditions here uh, in Atlanta right now. This green that you're seeing on the south side, that's not rain. Those are just some false echoes that we get near the radar site. That sometimes happens at the nighttime hours. But no rain here in our area. Uh, we're dry in the metro and also over to the east of us. We were watching a couple of showers south of I-20 just over the Alabama line. Those are falling apart. These are the ones, though, that are holding together. And I'm talking about very isolated showers. Most of us are not seeing anything at all. But the ones that are developing have mainly been up in north and northwest Georgia. This one west of Blue Ridge, also west of the Higdon area there in western Fannin County. Uh, that's drifting up toward the north, some moderate and heavy rain with it. But a little bit earlier, it had some 40 to 50 mile an hour winds with it. Not classified as severe, but just a good old downpour, but with some of those gusty winds. And then that's moving up toward the north. It's not going to move toward us. We'll stay dry here tonight. We're continuing to watch this moisture off the southeastern uh, coast there in southeast Georgia, uh, where that's that area of low pressure that we're talking about that's moving along that stalled out front. We also have this moisture out to the west moving in, and both of these together, the low trying to spread moisture our way and that system out to the west, that's what's going to increase our rain chances during the day tomorrow. Here's a live look uh, uh, from our tower cam there in Smyrna looking over Truist Park, where folks are there watching the Braves game tonight, and it's a pretty comfortable night out there temperature just moved down into the 70s. We're in the 70s now here in Atlanta at 78 degrees. We have 75 in Gainesville, lower 70s in Blairsville and Clarkson and, and uh, Clayton. And then even oh, it just went to 69 in Clayton that just updated right there. And then 72 in Carrollton and in Eatonton. So really comfortable temperatures, mostly clear skies, just a few clouds around and that's going to be the case overnight with just a few clouds mixing in at times and by tomorrow morning starting off in the lower 70s. Then we get up into around 78 by 10 and those temperatures continue to climb during the day. I do think we'll stay just shy of 90 again tomorrow with a high of about 88 degrees after that morning low of 70. So on our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day, we're going to go with a 6 on the wisometer as we're going to see a few scattered showers that will be developing here, mainly in the afternoon. So you see tonight up in North Georgia, that's where we're seeing a few of those showers. Elsewhere, we are dry in the morning. We're also going to be dry here as well. Still dry at lunchtime and then watch there in West Georgia. A few of those showers trying to develop here and it's not going to be a real organized system or a line of storms moving in or anything. It's just going to be enough heating and enough moisture to bubble up a few showers with this weak little disturbance that's going to move through and that'll give us that 40% chance for showers mainly in the afternoon. Any of those that develop will die out during the evening hours and then Sunday's rain chances are much lower. We're just going to go with about a 20% chance for a shower on Sunday afternoon. See that with just a little bit of that green that is showing up here on the uh, future radar. So here's that seven day outlook 88 degrees for a high temperature on Saturday uh, with that 40% chance for 
for some showers and then on Sunday the rain chance is down to only 20% and that's when the temperatures start moving back up into the lower 90s. Then we go back to a 30% chance Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and with that temperatures will still be in the lower 90s too. Here's a look at your weather wow moment from Sherry Stover uh, up in North Georgia. A beautiful picture taken this morning of the sunrise there and the clouds mixing in with that sun, giving us some nice colors on the horizon. Thanks, Sherry, for sending that to us. Uh, Sherry is one of our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers. You can be a part of that group. It's really easy on Facebook. Just search 11 Alive Storm Trackers. You'll find the group. Click on it. It's a closed group. But if you ask for membership and answer the membership questions, you can be a part of this exclusive local weather community. All right, Chris, thanks. There are a lot of people connected asking questions about Georgia politics. Is Herschel running? How about Stacey Abrams? What's going on with her these days? Is she going to run for the governor's job? A lot of questions, not a lot of answers right now. We'll talk with Chuck Todd of NBC next. I only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love Right now there are two names in Georgia, one Republican, one Democrat that have Georgia officials and voters waiting, wanting to hear if they are indeed running for office in 2022. Herschel Walker and Stacey Abrams. And joining me right now is Chuck Todd, moderator of NBC's Meet the Press, which returns this Sunday morning. Chuck, we want to begin with Herschel. And his decision has kind of held up this Georgia Senate process on the Republican side. We haven't heard from him yet as far as a decision goes, but another Republican, Gary Black, who is very well connected, very well respected in this state, is right. starting to take some jabs at him. Do Georgia Republicans want Walker in or out? Or has a decision already been made, do you think? Well, I don't, I don't know of an establishment Republican figure in Georgia or Washington that wants Walker in. The only people that want Walker in uh, have the last name of Trump. And that's what's happened here. And I'll tell you this, if, there, if Herschel Walker has made a mistake, it's letting this linger. Because you've seen this oppo research that has circulated about his personal life and various things. It isn't coming from Democrats. It's coming from Republicans, Jeff. 
it's pretty clear to me that that is what McC Team McConnell, Mitch McConnell, who's certainly basically the unofficial quarterback of the Senate Republican effort, if you will, to, to get control of the Senate. He's met with David Perdue to try to convince him, uh, Kelly Leffler to get back in. Um, you know, keep an eye on both of those. So uh, I, I, there's definitely not a lot of appetite for Walker to get into this race beyond anybody with the last name of Trump. And it looks to me like the, you know, let's see what, what Herschel does. But every day he doesn't get in tells me, um, tells me this is, uh, this is going to become a problem, uh, a bigger problem for him. Well, it's been anticipated for a while that Stacey Abrams would challenge Governor Kemp in a rematch of 2018. However, she recently announced a nationwide tour uh, to talk about politics and social justice, there are no stops in Georgia. Yeah. I, do you find that to be curious? I did. I'm so, I'm so glad you brought this up. It was one of those things that caught my eye, and um, even while I was on my little uh, respite, Olympic respite, if you will, um, I'm sitting there going, well, this is a curious timing. This is curious timing if you are going to run in a statewide race to be to this. Now, now you could make an argument Stacey Abrams would probably say, well, this race is going to be nationalized whether I go on a tour or not. And there's probably some argument to that. I, and she's still probably the strongest Democrat they could get. But yeah, I, I, I saw that and I thought, boy, that, it, it, you know, it only partisanizes you more, yeah. right? And at the end of the day, it really is, to be, what, what is your theory of how you win in Georgia? And if, if she believes it's about getting out your own vote, then maybe this isn't that harmful. But it, it I, I put it this way, I, I sort of, I arched my eyebrow on it when I saw it. Yeah. Governor Kemp here this week with uh, some, some jabs at the Atlanta mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, saying that police officers in our city here, Atlanta, need to be focused on crime and street racing, which is a huge issue here, instead of enforcing mask yeah. mandates. It, you know, Yogi Berra has said, you know, it was deja vu all over again, but here we are. I mean, it, this looks like last year all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, politics begins to take a very familiar lilt right now with masks and mandates and all of that. I'll tell you this, though. I think COVID is a problem for every chief executive, whether you're a governor, a president, a mayor, because you have a populace out here right now that's upset. The vaccinated are upset that they have to go back to this. They're mad, some of them are mad at the unvaccinated, some of them are mad at, at their leaders for not pushing it hard enough. The unvaccinated are upset that these mandates might have to come back and they're sitting there going, they wanna blame you know, big government or they wanna blame the migrants or they wanna blame the media or, or medical professionals. But it's, a t it's, a, it's, a, it's an ugly stew here, if you will, uh, Jeff, which, and, I, and I, if you look across the board, every chief executive's numbers have softened in the last month right. and it's all coincided with the rise of the delta variant here so look I, I i do feel like every chief executive has decided to play base politics with this because it's it's about the only the only move politically they think they have I, it's a short term it's a short term solution to problems but i think that that's a recipe for long term long term agita if you're not careful meet the press returns sunday morning at 10 right here on 11 alive chuck todd thanks appreciate it you got it, buddy. Whoever, because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. 
How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Just Lee, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even the Atlanta's airport is once again the busiest with 7.5 million passengers now flying through Atlanta every month. So did the airport bulldoze its busiest firehouse, the one closest to the domestic terminal? The reveal's chief investigator, Brendan Keefe, discovered that decision caused ambulance response times to take off. Atlanta 911. What's the address of your emergency? Airport. Atlanta Airport. Yeah, Atlanta Airport. Airport 911. Walking into the terminal, there was a family maybe 50 yards in front of us also walking in. I heard something. It sounded like somebody dropped luggage. And then we watched this woman fall. So I took off running. There is a woman who has fallen and is her North Daily Level 1 airport parking deck. She was non-responsive and wasn't breathing, and so I called 911 while my brother went to go find an AED inside the airport. One was running, one was calling, and I was doing compressions. They were doing chest compressions right now. Midway through the call, I heard my dad say, she's not breathing, I can't find a pulse. You said she is breathing? No, she is not. She is not. Okay, I have one of them. We need help as quickly as possible. All right. It kind of felt like you're on your own until someone just happens to show up. Engine 32, medic 4, responding to the north lower level. Outside of door LN1, they're doing CPR on the patient. Did help arrive immediately? No. The heroic bystanders, including this Gwinnett High School CPR instructor, don't know if the woman lived or died because of health privacy laws. But we've discovered that Atlanta Airport's Engine 32 took 7 minutes and 25 seconds to get to the scene after Nathan's call for help. The airport ambulance took nearly 14 minutes. Did you have any idea that there was a firehouse just 500 yards from you? Not even remotely. 500 yards, I mean, you can literally trot across the parking lot if you had to in that situation. Fire Station 32 would have been the closest rescue unit that morning last December. So why didn't Engine 32 and other rescue units get there sooner? because the firehouse was gone. The airport bulldozed Station 32 a year ago to add passenger gates. The airport will extend Concourse T with five gates. These new gates will help us accommodate more passengers and even more airlines. There were five rescue stations ringing Atlanta's airport. The closest to the domestic terminal, Fire Station 32. With an advanced life support fire engine and an ambulance, it has a drive time of less than one minute to the middle of the terminal gates. But now, Fire Station 32 is gone. The next closest fire station is on the other end of the airfield, Fire Station 24. 
It has a drive time to the middle of the T gates of more than five minutes. That adds four minutes to the total response time. The next closest station is on the south end of the airfield, Fire Station 40. It has a drive time to the middle of the T gates of more than seven minutes. That adds six minutes to the total response time to the domestic terminal from the now closed Fire Station 32. Atlanta's aviation and fire departments both refused to grant us another interview. Instead, the city said the loss of the firehouse is temporary, and in the meantime, they're staging personnel and equipment inside the concourse and along the terminal roadway, and they're confident the airport will not experience any degradation in services. Did you break your leg? Just hours after the airport released that statement, 13, can you check on, uh, a 76-year-old passenger fell in line for the main security. Checkpoint. It's been about 12 minutes since the Yeah, they're notoriously slow. I don't know if she fell over somebody's baggage or what, but it looks like her left hip is dislocated. 39 minutes. I mean, we're still standing by for the ambulance with the uh, stretcher. They anywhere close? Where are they coming from? The injured passenger was forced to sit on the floor in the middle of the main terminal for a full hour with a dislocated hip because there was no ambulance available. So that tells me you only have one ambulance working today? Still not enough to cover when you got 65,000 employees and 250,000 passengers coming through. Yep. But you already know that. <laughs> The documented drive time for Medic 1 from the now closed Station 32 would have been 57 seconds. I don't know what their ETA is, but we need to get this lady up off this floor. Instead, it took more than an hour and a half and three tries, ultimately getting an ambulance from another city. We're still waiting on our next transport. This is, the this is the busiest airport in the world. We got one day on we analyzed data from thousands of medical calls at the airport before and after the closure of Station 32. The displaced EMS units are now taking 65% longer. That's an extra 3 minutes and 40 seconds per medical run when every second counts. Airport Communications to Engine 32, Med 4, respond to the South Economy parking. Fire Station 32 would have been the closest to Thomas Lawson as he lay dying in the South Economy lot last November. Engine 32 was sent from farther away and started CPR 22 minutes after his wife Ruth called 911. They were coming to the airport from the airport. And how come they don't know how to get around the airport? The reveal obtained this internal working group report from 2019, warning in advance that the loss of Station 32 would result in much longer response times and urging the airport to build its replacement next to and along with the five new passenger gates. The airport shelved those designs even though they were 100% complete, priced, permitted, and ready to be constructed. The working group considered three alternatives, including not re building the fire station at all, but none of the options included holding off on the demolition of the old fire station until a new one could be built elsewhere. The old fire station was demolished and we will be constructing this beautiful new one to support airport operations. Construction on the replacement for station 32 is slated to begin soon in a different location near the South Economy lot, but it won't be done until the end of 2022, leaving Atlanta's airport without a rescue station near the busy domestic terminal for two and a half years. So why doesn't the airport prioritize ambulances, even making them park behind fire trucks? Because Hartsfield Jackson's operating certificate depends on how quickly fire trucks can get to the runways, not ambulances. The FAA's regulations require all kinds of fire trucks, all kinds of firefighting foam within a distance of the runway, but there's no requirement for ambulances close to the terminal. Does that make any sense? It doesn't to me. That makes absolutely zero sense. It seems like there's such a huge oversight. That is some amazing reporting from someone who has a very strong and stout national reputation. We're glad to have him here, Brendan Keefe. As schools begin reopening here in the metro and across the nation, most states, including Georgia, are leaving it up to local schools to decide whether to wear a mask or not. The map puts it all into perspective. New Jersey, Illinois, California, Louisiana, Oregon and Washington intend to require a mask for all students and teachers, regardless of the vaccine status. At the other end of the spectrum, you have states like Florida, South Carolina, Texas and a few others that have banned mask requirements in all public schools. 
Today, Governor Kemp doubled down on his opposition to a statewide mask mandate for schools while visiting students and staff at a school in Cherokee County. 11 Alive's Brittany Kleinpeter had the opportunity to ask him about it. During his visit at this elementary school in Cherokee County today, Governor Kemp said that he continues to have the same concerns about mandates and is planning on leaving that decision up to local educators and keeping it out of the hands of government. Every school is different. There are different neighborhoods and different counties. You know, they're rural, they're suburban, they're urban. And, you know, I for one have been for the most part when I could be a local control governor when it comes to education. The governor adding he trusts the school system because he believes they've adequately handled coronavirus issues over the last 15 months. We're doing the same thing we did last year. We're trusting the local school systems, the local boards to work with their parents, work with their administration and make good decisions for each individual school. According to the Associated Press, about 30% of public schools in Georgia have some kind of mask mandate. Masks are optional in the rest. Some parents have told 11 Alive it's led kids who opt to wear a mask to be bullied. We asked Governor Kemp about it. Well, look, if, if I was that parent, I'd be talking to the principal at the school and the teachers and making sure that that's not happening. I mean, I'm very confident the local systems can deal with that. The governor and the first lady said they chose to visit Ball Ground Elementary today to express their gratitude to teachers and staff for their resilience and dedication over the last year. The visit comes at a time when thousands of students across the state are heading back to the classroom. And as the governor faces pressure from fellow Republicans, to ban mask mandates in schools. While some children may be excited to finally return to the classroom, experts say that may not be the case for everybody. Liza Lucas gives us a closer look at how kids are faring amidst the ongoing pandemic and how schools plan to support students as the school year unfolds. By the second semester, motivation was down, their grades were starting to fall. What Dr. Janine Janot works with students who are struggling or need extra support. And while she says there was a growing need for mental health support prior to COVID-19, she says the need this past year has been huge. What students were telling me was they didn't care anymore. And this was really unsettling to students because what I'd always heard in the past was, you know, I may look like I don't care, but I really care. I just can't figure out what I need to do. Dr. Janot attributes such feelings to burnout, but says kids on the whole have been really suffering in the wake of the pandemic. The latest Kids Count report gives us a little idea of how Georgia kids are doing. According to July data, nearly a third of families surveyed report kids feeling nervous, anxious, or on edge, while 24% feel down, depressed, or hopeless. And Dr. Janot is concerned some kids didn't get a real break this summer amid efforts to deal with learning. Loss. Well, the summer was the perfect opportunity to take a break and recover. So any kids who were pushed into or pushed themselves into doing more work this summer, um, I, I'm afraid they'll walk through the door still burned out. 11 Alive checked in with Metro Atlanta districts to get a better idea of how schools will support students this year. Atlanta Public Schools is hiring 10 additional psychologists and 25 more social workers. Gwinnett also doubling social worker staff to accommodate the need. Part of Fulton County School strategy includes a text for help tool, while Paulding County will have crisis text line cards available for all middle and high school students. Just a snapshot of some of the efforts in place. My deepest hope is that when those students walk through the door that their mental health is priority. We also want to share a few resources. Experts say students, parents and teachers can take advantage of the freeyourfeels.org website has resources. Experts also recommend the Not OK app which was developed by Atlanta siblings. And don't forget Georgia crisis and access lines available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The number's on your screen, 1-800-715-4225. You can find more on Liza's story online. We're still keeping an eye on a few of those showers that are up in North Georgia right now. They're finally weakening and no additional showers out there right now, but more will redevelop as we go through the day tomorrow. We'll track that for you coming up. Coming up, football is back. Fall camp begins in Athens and Atlanta. You'll hear from Kirby Smart, and Jeff Collins as both clubs with a lot of optimism. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 
11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts and watch on demand. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh and feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Just Lee, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts and watch on demand. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh and feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Thousands of teenagers gearing up for a huge event at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. There will be live music, games, prizes, and voter education, an innovative new program aimed at teaching teenagers still too young to vote. Everything they, they need to know about learning how to vote. It's Friday night, isn't it? Here's Caitlin Ross with a story you'll only see here. The teens taking this democracy class want voting to be just as exciting as attending a football game or a soccer match. That's why they're so excited to have the training at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I am freedom, liberty, and justice for all. I wonder would the blood from my ancestors strengthen me to truly stand tall. 17-year-old Zakai Beck has thought and written a lot about his right to vote, even though he won't be eligible to until next year. A lot of people feel powerless, so they feel like they don't know what to do because they don't know how to do or how to go about it. The Democracy Atlanta class is being taught by Rock the Vote in the New Georgia Project, nonpartisan nonprofits aimed at engaging people in the voting process. Beck says they've learned a lot about how groups of voters have been disenfranchised through the years. If there's a cycle that we want to break, we have to take action towards that. And that starts off with letting people know the steps, what they want to do, what they need to do. We do nothing in our society to really prepare 18-year-olds to, uh, to become voters when they become eligible. Carolyn DeWitt heads up Rock the Vote and says getting kids involved in the process before they turn 18 is the best way to get them to turn up at the polls once they do. I hope that I keep moving forward, never falter nor fall. I am freedom, liberty, and justice for all. 
All Atlanta public school students will be invited to a rally on September 28th to learn about the voting process. They'll have live music, games, and a whole lot of democracy. They're going to teach people how to register to vote and then become poll workers if they're interested once they turn 18. Dry weather here in Atlanta and those showers up in North Georgia are finally falling apart and you know it wasn't impacting a lot of people. They were kind of small, but it was mainly up in northwest uh, northern Georgia where we were watching a few of those showers. Nothing going on here. The green that you're seeing on the south side. Those are just some false echoes, but we had some good rain coming down earlier in parts of western Fannin County. That was just to the west of Blue Ridge and Higdon area. You can see how that's falling apart moving up into uh, parts of Tennessee though right now just south of Parksville and it had some heavy rain and a little bit of uh, wind with it too, 40 to 50 mile an hour winds in parts of Fannin County earlier. But again, that's all moving out of the state right now and things are going to be a lot calmer up in far north Georgia. Still watching additional moisture to the west that will be moving our way tomorrow. And also this system to the south and east is trying to feed some moisture our way too. And that's both of those are just going to enhance our rain chances. Oh, check it out. Here's our live camera here at the truest where the game maybe just ended or they're having a special fireworks show uh, tonight. I love that. It's been a great night for baseball tonight. Uh, I just want to sit here and keep watching this here as we see the fireworks there at Truist Park. The Braves play in the Nationals tonight. I don't know a score, so uh, if I was a sports guy, I would be able to Report that to you, but uh, I'm not a sports guy, but it's kind of cool to see that. So a good treat for the folks at Truist Park tonight with nice weather. Temperatures have been nice and comfortable out there tonight, generally holding in the 70s for much of the game. Uh, started off in the 80s and then fell down into the 70s and then not as much humidity around too. So hope they enjoyed that fireworks show. I, I'm glad that you guys got to see it here as well live on uh, the ATL. 86 degrees was our high today, four degrees below the average. We should be at 90 for this time of year. Our low this morning, just one degree below the average as well. But we're going to go back to average. As I told you, that average high for this time of year is 90 degrees. Tomorrow will be below average for another day at 88 degrees. You know, it's been a few days since we've hit the, the 90s, but we do think we'll get back to the 90s coming in on Sunday right at 90 degrees and then just a little bit above the average on Monday at 91 and then back to 90 on Tuesday and also on Wednesday with those temperatures coming up. The rain chance also goes down a little bit to 20% Sunday and Monday. That's after a 40% chance for shower Saturday and then back to a 30% chance also on Tuesday and Wednesday. So here's a look at our headlines. A few more showers Saturday compared to what we had out there for today. Lower rain chance moving in for next week. And then we're going to see those temperatures back to the lower 90s for next week too. watching three potential systems out in the tropics right now. These first two in the central Atlantic have really low chances of development. The one coming off the coast of Africa has a little better chance of developing at about 50% over the next five days, but it's still way out there. It won't have any type of impact on us if it even makes it here anytime soon. 20% chance for showers Sunday, Monday, back to a 30% chance Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with high temperatures back to the 90s. Trey Young made his five year extension the real deal with the Falcons reportedly worth up to two hundred and seven million dollars. The uh, team also officially re-signed John Collins with the Hawks who took a reported deal of one hundred and twenty five million over five years. All of a sudden the Atlanta Braves are on a roll. They have won four of their last five. They are just one and a half games back of first place in the division. A chance to close that gap even more against the Washington Nationals and back home at Truist Park. The Braves loaded the bases in the first inning. Adam Duvall driving in two with two out and the Braves jump out two nothing. Kyle Muller on the mound and a little bit wild at times. Wild pitch here. The mistakes allow the Nats back into it. Down three two in the fifth two outs. Dominant duo of Riley and Swanson drive in a couple of more runs to take the lead. Braves are red hot. They win this contest, this fray, this game, this battle, this tilt, 8-4, to four, the final. UGA open fall camp this afternoon, and there is a lot of hype for the Dogs in their Week 1 matchup against Clemson. Some may think a high-profile Week 1 game would give the Dogs a little bit of boost in preseason camp, but Kirby Smart says that's not the case.
A lot of people say that the opening game affects your off-season workouts, and I don't disagree with that, but I also don't think we're going to work out any less or a little any, any, any less intense, regardless of who we're playing. Everybody's excited. You know, it's the uh, first – we got a first day of camp, first practice today, so everybody's excited. Everybody's high energy. Everybody's ready for the season to start. Everybody's excited about what we can do this season. Jeff Collins entering year three and his goal this season simple win. The Jackets have a tough schedule. Players believe that they have an opportunity to be better and Alex Glaze has the story. Jeff Collins is getting ready for his third season as Georgia Tech's head coach. The Jackets were picked to finish sixth in the Coastal Division and they want to prove the doubters wrong. The focus on what's important now and every single game focus on winning that game, um, but you got to win every single day. Collins expects to win and when you look at Tech's schedule this year, there are plenty of opportunities to show that this isn't the same Georgia Tech team that we've seen the past couple of years. We just got to put our head down and keep working like everybody's on the same page, everybody's hungry, you know, there's no no entitlement on this team, nobody feel like they're bigger than, you know, somebody else. Everything's an opportunity for us, uh, we know that we're overlooked, we know, you know, we're put behind, you know, due to what we did in the past couple of years. We want to be able to give from underneath that shadow. For the first time under Collins, there will be consistency at key positions on both sides of the ball. That experience combined with continuity should translate to success. There is a focus, there is a level of maturity uh, that we've been trying to build and it's finally there. The ability to focus in our meetings, uh, just the way they're carrying themselves, confident, not a lot of rah-rah, not a lot of silliness. It's about coming in, focus, here's the process, we understand the process, we understand the expectations, now let's get to work. Jeff Collins made his expectations clear, and his players have completely bought in. All right, Mr. Glaze, thank you. That is it for sports. We're back right after this. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Live News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything 
to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she 88 degrees for your high tomorrow, but the rain chance is a little bit higher at 40%. And then they come down to 20% Sunday and Monday. But look what happens to the temperatures. They go up a few degrees to 90 and 91 degrees. We hold in the lower 90s for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And the rain chances come up a little bit to 30%. That's just that scattered or isolated shower activity each and every afternoon, thanks to the heat and humidity. I always use as a determinant, it's time to go when I refer to the Hawks as the Falcons. Have a good weekend, everyone. <laughs> good night. Atlanta and SEC Sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts and watch on demand. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts and watch on demand. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark.